Well, it's just laps for them. Yeah. Because the Trans Am stuff, but yeah, it'll yeah. be. I said earlier, I said to Elliot, I said, oh, let's see if you can actually keep the thing with four wheels on it. Yeah, it's fucking hard. <laughs> I, I reckon he's going to find it hard. He said, is it flat across the top? I went, yeah, the whole way. The whole way is flat. And he's like, even down. I'm like, yeah, flat, flat. <laughs> and there's no chance. <laughs> well, I remember I remember racing there once in the Ford and then I, I did a wrong gear change at the top of the mountain, set it oh. down and the thing spun and, I was, and it didn't hit the wall. And it just, and I was like, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. And I kept going. It lined itself back up again. I was like, oh, God. That's a weekend done. Yeah. I'm, I'm done. I'm happy. <laughs> I was like, I fucking had enough of shooting myself. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I was tempted to do it. Bart was like, oh, we should get the Spectrum out. But the thing is, it just, it had a huge accident at Eastern Creek. That's uh, it. I nearly lost the championship because Liddell had driven in. Like, I, I had a bad start, but yeah. I went straight to the inside, turn two. Yeah. And the guy who was like mid pack basically like just chopped, just chopped me, and then the car just fucking went in half. So how close did he end up in the championship? Oh, the guys behind me were like, because it was double points, they were all chasing. Basically, it was I only won by like nine points in the end. Oh, and what last race you were just a passenger, just just circulated. I, ba- I basically just had to putt around. Brooke was there going fuck, just make it to the end of the like the car was fucked. Like That's the end so of the like, driver. Yeah. Like he went out, you know, and they just they've got to go out for the first lap to line up. And it was just we just heard it popping. And then he's uh, engineer Julian's like, oh shit, that's Dan. And I'm like, in oh the, in no. the accident in the accident it went airborne. And then you know when it bounces all the back of the engine just fucking yeah, just like it. all the bolts yeah. and shit came loose. And then the car was just like and all the fucking shit was just And then you had to just roll around. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to do it. Oh, it was fucking painful. The I fucking know. engine would have fallen out with me. I would have been, oh, fuck it, I'm going. Because normally I flat shift in it. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. near, 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 like that. And I just, I was like, you, yeah. I was like, oh, fuck. I just want to like make to the end. And then all the Duratex are coming around. So I was basically just going off the line and just letting them all go through. And just, I was like, man, Bart, when's this, when's this race going to finish? He's like, just hold on. Oh, we all feel like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I for a red flag. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, oh, that's dude. too funny. Uh, are we live? Yeah, we're live. Oh, yeah. cool. Well, Tommy, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Um, dude, I'm pumped that you're here and um, you've got to tell me what's been going on because you are got to be the most busiest driver coach in Australia, in my opinion anyway. Oh, it's pretty busy. I <laughs> uh, just got back from Dubbo last night, so we were there for five days. Yeah. Um, that was sort of a pre-season camp and a what I call a school. So a lot of newbies, um, not just my race team, we break it down to actually really – Really basic skills, you know, your braking techniques, your, your steering techniques. So there's a group of uh, four of us. So Cody and myself are sort of head head coaches. So I attack one area, he attacks another. And then we've got uh, my old man come along and uh, Donnie McLean were in the pit. So they were actually teaching just the, the simple stuff. Like even it, it's quite funny. They said, oh, do you want me to teach them how to – clean an air clean and I just started laughing. I'm like, are you serious? And then I thought about it and I went, yeah, actually teach me how to clean an air clean because some days I look at them and it's not done properly. So, yeah, so that was five days. Uh, got back today, yep. unloaded the truck. Uh, I spent a bit of time with my kids and yep. then up here tomorrow morning to Perth uh, for two days, come back, unload another container of carts and then I – Think there's something else on then. Ah, oh, Bathurst. Yeah. Well, where I'm racing. Yeah, you were saying before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're at Bathurst and um, Elliot Cleary and Cody Gillis and Ellie Morrow at Bathurst in Formula Ford just to get laps. Yep. Uh, actually, no, before that, I've got then I've got a Trans Am test on the 20th and 21st at Queensland Raceway. Who's that with? Uh, that's with Cody Gillis and Elliot Cleary. So they're yep. running Trans Am this year. Yeah, okay. So I've got a two-day test there and then I'll fly from Brisbane to London um, and do three days in Europe and then a couple of meetings, fly back, then Bathurst, then, yeah, I don't know. It's just yeah. a blur. Because I've got to – you've just met Brooke obviously. Dan, yes. But she's actually like a past swimmer she was saying a lot of failed athletes, not, not necessarily that we've failed but – I'm You're, definitely uh, failed. <laughs> <laughs> but Brooke was saying that um, it's interesting coming from like our point of view where you're getting a lot of the young guys through and, you know, you're obviously training a lot of drivers and stuff like that. But she was thinking before that if she had failed in swimming that she could have maybe – you were saying something to me before off air when we were preparing for this interview. Oh, no, it was just more that, yeah, just understanding like what – 
I think for us, like we were saying like to Dan and that some people transition into coaching, which yeah. is what we're, when we were looking at uh, your bio and everything that you've done in that and you've done that so successfully and we're seeing that a lot now, like I was saying to Dan on Netflix, like a lot of people who didn't go down that athlete path for whatever reason, whether it was injury, money or whatever that was and have come, become coaches but they're just – got that innate ability to teach people in a way. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I think that's what was like really interesting with what you've done. Um, and it was just, yeah, it was just, that's a lot of what we want to talk about today. It, yes. It's it's interesting because well, uh, people have asked that question, how did you become a coach? Like mm. how did that happen? And it's like it sort of naturally went that way. And, and why I feel like I'm I'm reasonably good at it is because I wasn't, I wasn't good enough. As a driver myself, I wasn't good enough. Hey, mm. I, I could get a result every now and then, but I wasn't quite good enough. It just naturally the flair probably wasn't there, but I had to think about it so much and I probably spent more time thinking about what I was doing and the processes than actually being able to do it. So I, I feel like I, I, I was able to break it down and understand what makes someone fast. Yeah. And in the end, I just love it. Like it, the fact is that it, a lot of people say, oh, you, you you must get tired, you get over it. You know, I don't get over it. I just, I really do love it. Like, yeah, everybody gets tired, but this isn't work. It's 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 just, it's really fun. Like it's working with young kids, fresh kids. Like on the weekend, it was, you know, 36 degrees most days. Um, mm. We'd start at eight and we'd finish at eight. <laughs> it, was, it was nuts, <laughs> but it was just, see the kids smile like they make it make an improvement and and being there with them along and it, it's at the end of the weekend for me I'm I'm used to it but the new guys just like oh that was just that was awesome and you sort of go yeah uh, you forget that but what every now and then when you have that you're just like yeah that that is seriously cool that that those sort of things it's just the little things that that matter so much mm. is it as satisfying you being a coach now and seeing those kids faces to if you were to make say if you did make it to that top level is it as just as satisfying on that I do think you, would you've got that satisfaction do you get you're going to get more satisfaction out of teaching yeah. like lots of kids come through yeah I, I get more satisfaction out of that you know I, I hey people say to me do you want to get like we just had the conversation being in a form the forward lately or or mm. you know a go-kart and I can't think of anything that I don't want to do more because I remember how much hard work. If I jumped in a Formula Ford or a go kart, I reckon I'd last about a lap and a half, and I'd be absolutely rooted. Yeah, and sore for t- days. <laughs> I do it every now and then in a go kart, and I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go out with the, some of the good guys, and I, I think, oh yeah, I'm going all right. And then they just blow past me, and they go, "We've never seen a go kart." spinning the wheels and the front wheel in the air. I'm not using any of the technique yeah. that I use or, or that I teach or anything. So the satisfaction of working with kids and seeing them progress, mm. and that's from a little step to the big step, you know, and walking on the supercar grid and seeing guys that I worked with and and looking how far they've gone, um, that, that's really satisfying. Yeah, because we were saying before when we were messaging to get you onto this into the studio that, you know, you said, oh, Brock Feeney, I've, you know, trained yep. him, like, you know, Tom Sargent, who we've recently just had on as well yep. in this season. Was it, is it satisfying seeing Macaulay and Brock there and being like it's awesome? 100%. That, like, they're achieving their own goals? Yeah, you know yeah I mean? they're achieving it. They were, they, you know, um, they, they're both very, very talented in their own right. They would have made it either way, mm. um, you know, but knowing that, there was a little bit of, well, hey, I go up for the race. Good luck, Brock, you know, and I speak to them. And Mac, I, I'm still in his corner every every meeting that I can be there, I'll be in his corner, you know. He's mm. like a brother to me. I think we he was 11 when I first started with him and I lived with him for four or five years. Yeah, right. So, you know, that's that's a bond that he's part of the family. So that bond won't be broken, um, you know, and Brock's no different. It, it, when, when you – in the team that 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 closely, you end up part of your family. So um, it's it's cool, you know, seeing those guys. Tommy Sargent, he had a couple of tough years, I would I would say, in falling forward. Like he missed out, but then seeing him get on a roll, mm. um, it's funny. There was a group there that in juniors, you know, uh, Brock Feeney, Tom Sargent, um, Hunter McRae, yeah. uh who else was there? Did you have Hunter in your group? Yeah. yeah okay. uh, briefly, but they're all in that group at the one stage. And, yeah. and 
you know, um, there's others, there's Zane Morse, you know, uh, Josh Fife. There, there was a whole group and it was it was such a, a good group of drivers that, that you know, really, Timmy, Colin, Britta, they all pushed and they've all gone on to different things mm. and been successful. Um, and it reminds me, like the other day, I was talking to my wife Zoe and I, I feel like I've got a junior group like that. You know, you go in phase, but right now I've got a junior crop that are this, they remind me so many things, you know, their, their natural flair of each way, a little bit different, you know. Um, and when you get that, well, well, I feel when I get that, mm. it's, it's, it's like you're a, what is it, a music conductor. You're just sort of pointing them just in the right direction. They've got so much talent. Yeah. You, all you're ever doing is, no, no, slow down. Christian Horn is not here ready to sign you just yet. Like yeah. just just <laughs> slow down. Wait, I asked this I asked this of Wally's story and I walked away not agreeing with what he said, but it'd be interesting from you from a coach's perspective. I said because the, motorsport's different to other sports in the fact that you um, can't always train. You're yep. like, you know, some like swimmers, footy players, everyone can every day, morning and night and do it. And some people like we've seen in the past, like Michael Jordan and others, they started off like they've said in their bio, like their whatever documentaries and that, that they were shit at it and everyone said that they wouldn't make it, but they proved everyone wrong by working hard at it. My question was, do you see some drivers, I know some people do have a natural flair that they'll have and then they work on it, or do you see some come through that start off not good but turn out to be really good if they train hard enough? Yeah, because Tommy Sargent was saying, from what Brooke was saying, he came on the podcast, he goes, honestly, Hooli, I was shit ass at the start. And I, you've even yeah. saw me when I, I started, I took a while to get get. Yeah, you know what I mean? it's, it, uh, Wally, Wally's an absolute crack up. Yeah. Like, Wally, <laughs> like, like That's why when he says different stuff, I'm like, yeah. I don't know. He's like, no, you either got it or you don't. That's it with motorsport. And I was like, oh, I don't know. if That doesn't sound fair if you nah, haven't trained. We, we've had that conversation. <laughs> we differ a little bit. Um, I, 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 like some of my best drivers, like Tommy Sargent, is one of them that was like, I plucked him out of oblivion. So mm. we went down to, was it Grenfell? Grenfell's his yeah, track. Yeah, yep. Um, uh, Craig owns Grenfell, I reckon, the whole the whole lot, the yeah. whole state. Uh, Grenfell's <laughs> is the sergeant's. But yeah. <laughs> we just went to like a camp and I, I saw him drive and he may think he was hopeless. Yeah. He wasn't hopeless. Craig was hopeless. Yeah. He was good straight away. He had he had a lot of talent. Yeah. Um, he hey, he didn't get results, mm. but he had a lot of talent. But you, you can say that about Josh Fife. Before Josh Fife come to me, man, I, he, he'd every now and then be be fast, mm. but just didn't have the ingredients. So it's hard. But I think the harder you work, the luckier you get. Mm. And I, I I do believe that there's, there's definitely cases of people that weren't fast, but they ended up being good. Um, if, you, if you've got – if you want it bad enough – hundred percent you can get there mm. you know is it is it easy nah nothing nothing worth it is easy mm. some kids I, I find the ones like there, there's some kids that it has got that much talent they actually never make it because they don't know how to work hard yeah yeah and you know a lot of them like a lot of our best drivers are still stuck in go-karts and end up not not going further now is that funding is it this is it that in the end it's it's all those things, but yeah, I take my hat off. Like Scotty Andrews, mm. he's a, he's a friend of mine. We we caught up at Adelaide, and I was just like, dude, I take my hat off to you. Like I gave up, and it's impressive that you kept on banging on doors. Now the guy's living the life, winning races, racing professional. That's a guy there that just kept dedicated, you know. And Joey Mawson, like that, like Joey's one of those guys that just hasn't had the right. Um, ingredients, as you were saying. Yeah, it, it's it's ingredients. It's a it, little bit of luck, but you make your own luck. He just just hasn't quite mm. kicked it. But talent wise, hey, he's got everything you need. But you know, he's either trot on his dick every now and then, or it just hasn't fallen at the right time. Yeah, and that's hard. Like as a, as someone that loves the sport, I hate watching that. Like I, I, that's the one part that I I hate looking at and going, you know what? That kid deserves a spot. And, and and that's just one person. Like we can name, we could sit here all night and name all different people, but that's one that comes to mind because I'm looking at one of his suits. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and Joey yeah. and I talk every, you know, two weeks and have a laugh. But, yeah. you know, like the, these, there's that part that's frustrating. But the question, can you make it without being naturally gifted? 
Yeah, but you have to work frigging hard. Yeah. yeah. But that actually, that's like any sport. Yeah. Well, that's like me though. I wanted to win that state championship for so bad, like so badly over the years. And I was, you were saying like you were going to give up because you couldn't hold on those when the car was. When I was no, different to you. Yeah. Like I had to chip away and chip away at it, but people. But you now, changed everything to do it. And yeah. you changed what your mindset, you changed the way your team went, you changed everything. Yeah. And you threw everything, but you didn't give up. Yeah. And you did it. Yeah. You know, so that it, it, it's, it's the want. But I believe it, it's it's more desire, and if you have the desire and the people around you that buy into it, you'll you'll make it. Yeah, this reminds you of the story that we were talking about also off off air, where you raced at Oran Park with a broken leg, and that's basically when I looked at you back then <laughs> as a kid, and I was I was t- I was smaller than you, right? Yeah, I was like, holy shit! If he's racing with a broken leg, because I'm your your wife Zoe's has yes. autism, I yep. have autism, right? Yep. So I was thinking. If, you know, Tom can race with a broken leg, I can get past my, me- my mental disabilities yeah. and race a cart fast. Yeah. And that's what I did, obviously. Yeah, I, yeah 100%. Yeah. It took a little bit. Uh, it's funny. Like, So it was it was a broken ankle and foot. Mm. And, um, yeah, I wasn't going to stop. Like I was actually – I didn't think it was that bad, but it probably wasn't a great decision considering it was my break, break leg. But um, I think I was faster for it mm. because I – it. Like I, I, I'm, I'm, I was crazy in a go kart, so I think I actually had to think a little bit and slow down. So it definitely helped, but it's just desire. And, and you know, it like Zoe, yeah, that's what she does. She she teaches autistic kids. I've had kids in carts that are autistic. Mm. Um, she picks them for a mile off. And but I can tell you one thing: when you guys get your head around. The first three laps, I mm. find it's the first three laps and you're able to, you know, understand that it's not uh, everything's going to be – you, you can't control mm. everything else. You can only control what you're doing and you can go with the flow. There's no one that can lead as well. Mm. I, I, I don't care what anyone says. There's nobody that can hit their marks and lead as well. Once they get in front and if it's lap three and the cart's going to keep on coming on, it's like – Goodbye. Just, <laughs> there's yeah. no mistakes. That's like, what Dan wow. does. Yeah. He went into the store. It could have been like two or three years since you've been in it in yeah. December. Chucked a massive tantrum on the first two days. Due to Wally's story. Because you were like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you and Wally. Oh, I turned up on the Sunday because he kept saying to me, it's not what I was expecting. It's not this. It's not that. Because I know when he gets that mindset, it's like I want it to be like the Kent. And I'm like, it's we're all like, even it's Bart not. was like, it's not, Dan, get over it. <laughs> Rocks up on the Sunday and then he's going through the video and then Bart's taking him through, this is what you'll do here, here, here and here. And he d- listens, does it, and then all of a sudden – it's like it, it just clicks and then you just watch him and then he's just we're just watching him hit the corners we're at the right mark overtake people going around we're like yeah. he's got it finally we're, yes we're two laps through on nearly one because i by the end of the weekend bart bart and brooke were like you got to get over this because uh, uh, that's the thing with autism autism you would have seen obviously growing yeah. up with me i'd, I'd obsess over things yeah, you see the autistic people they obsess yep. over things yep. and bart and brooke obviously works with like works with me now because she lives with me as yep. well it's that thing of trying to like separated apart. And I guess for you teaching autistic kids, do they have like a certain drive? Does, does actually, does every driving, does every cart cart that you teach have a different driving style or do you uh, teach them to a way to? Yeah, I, I, maybe they do. Mm. I don't. Have yeah, you noticed? They, they like, probably do, but I change it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they don't like it. Um, yeah. yeah. Like they, they definitely do. I, I but you, you, you can tell the, like you said, like you, you, autism, you, you, you're stuck in your ways. Like that's that's the way that I eat this for breakfast. This is how I do it. You know, that that's my spot. That's where I sit. Yeah. It took me a while to learn that. And Zoe, Zoe helped me with that. And then I saw, I went, Oh, I reckon that that kid that I helped five years ago, I reckon he may have had autism. Mm. Never asked a question, but I just assumed. Yeah. You know, and now it, it being uh um more known about, you know, there's definitely you, you, I definitely teach differently there because you you've got to use the word you you, I I say to you oh you know your braking technique you need to fix this you need to use less pressure here there if you don't understand that and don't get that you most of the time you go yeah yeah okay but you go and do the same thing and just like the kid's not listening (laughs) but it's not the fact it's they don't understand what you're saying so you've got to do it a couple of different ways and at one point, as you just said, all of a sudden, oh, yeah, bang. 
And it's like a look. It's like, oh, they've got it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sweet. But it, it's it's interesting. Like every kid is a little bit different. Like some are visual, some aren't. You know, some can read data. Others look at data and go, oh, they're squiggly lines, mm. you know, and get lost. Um, you know, and, and like at my team, we do a lot of data. Mm. Um, I don't have anybody... Well, Ellie, Ellie does download a lot. Um, Elliot do, they help me with it. But a lot of the data running through it is me and I sort of think about it. I actually think back to me, like imagine if I did data and I would be completely lost. Um, <laughs> and I couldn't come up with an excuse of, oh, no, I, that, that wasn't the problem. Yeah. Um, but it, it's it's very – the it, kids are very – these days um, – Technology based, yeah, yeah. Because that's what I was thinking. I was going to ask, obviously, at the start of the podcast, where you and I grew up in that analog era, and we had to learn everything very like basic. And obviously, the cart teams that are around now, like your team, I don't know, there's many, many it's teams. Very different, yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I mean? They're more set out, like more structured. Where we we kind of turned up in like a in a trailer and ba- very basic. Put on, put the cart on the track and go. And that's kind of what I can tell from what you did with the Dubbo trip. Do you know what I mean? You. That's what, Bart, basics, that's, that's what Bart did with me though. Yeah. Do you know camp, what I mean? at the, camp at the track, bring it back to basics. Mm. Like the only thing I'm disappointed I didn't do a double is I didn't do spotlight because it went dark so 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 late. Like those back the uh, uh, fun things, bring it back to basics um, because that's that's why we did this. That's why we fell in love with what we did. Um, I feel now the team, like well, my team, all the teams, very professional. From when we were, mm. it was probably one professional team, which was Tim Craig's. Yeah. And it was like revolutionary. Yeah. Um, I look back at it now and I look at, you know, Tim Craig and um, sorry, uh um Tony Cart, you know, Jim Morton's team, they were both, you know, yeah. juggernauts. Uh I felt that Tim's was was sort of a uh, Tim. I look up to Tim the way he did it from back then. Like you know, the way that he ran his team um, back then was was pretty cool. Like he, it he was, still he runs his Pulsar team like Cart One now. Yeah, though. he would. Like, he would. It's just everything is like structured, and it's kind of like what you're doing too, though. Like yeah. I've got to ask about your Cart team. You'd obviously have. Do you have like a like a roster in a way? And you the way you do you have like a squiggly line way of where they go? And do you know what I mean? Like all the stuff you explained earlier, or yeah. Uh, like all, the guy, to- all the guys that work for me, all right, like Cody and Zoe and Darren and Elliot, I reckon I drive them crazy because in my head I've got all this stuff but I don't talk about it. Mm. So they get to the track <laughs> and they'll have carts here, there and everywhere. Like, no, 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 that cart goes here, there, there. So, yeah, sort of. I, I, I group them and I know who likes pitting next to each other and, and well, they might be friends with them but, no, he distracts him and, and, and it just doesn't work and, you know, yeah, I, I've got that sort of stuff. I've got a plan in my head and if I'm feeling generous, I tell everybody close to me the plan or some days I just don't tell anybody and just they'll be on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> so I reckon that's that that's probably difficult working with me, to be perfectly honest. It's something that everybody's been on to me and I've got to work at. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I have a plan in my head, a blueprint that I use um, when we go testing and – uh, that's that's the way Tim did it. I'm pretty sure, you know, and the way he, he's very structured. Um, yeah. He's got this. Is, he just works hard, man. Yeah, he works hard. Um, no different to Jim Morton. He he worked hard. He had a smaller operation, and he sort of he did it the way I think everybody'd love to do it, and pick the best drivers he could, and just run with them. You yeah. know, um, that's a pretty cool concept. And you look at the drivers that come out of his stable. You know, you got your Ryan Briscoes, you've got your Mark Winterbottom. Michael Crusoe, you know, uh, Alan Gurr, uh, mm. James Gurr, <laughs> the list goes on. Like it was a pretty cool yeah. um, top team, but Tim would still beat him. Yeah. You know, he had the crop and and Tim would had top cart and ran a juggernaut and ran it with a you know an iron fist. Yeah. And no, yeah, no, McFadden, Limbom, like mate, those are his, yeah. He, he had, had that, crackers, man, like yeah. Neil McFadden. Yeah. There's one that didn't make it and. Mate, there's nothing he didn't win. I get messages all the time trying to get him on the podcast, but he's just MIA. Do you know oh, what I mean? Good luck getting yeah. Neil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, you you know what I mean? Like even Limbo himself, like he chewed me for a bit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. those guys just obviously had that bit and they were always trying to get there. But you know what I mean? Again, those guys just disappear yeah, off just, the map. It's 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 disappointing. I know what you mean when you watch it on TV. You just watch it and you're just like, dude, that guy, that guy had it. Yeah. You know, why, why didn't it? Why didn't it happen? Yeah. You know, um, and that's frustrating. So 
you know, that's why now I'm doing the Trans Am team. Um, with with a, with a couple of other guys that are helping me. Mm. Um, is it your is it your team with your branding? Or no, is no. It- so it's it's going to be called the. Oh, I got to remember this now. You put me on the, <laughs> um, the race academy. Okay. So the concept is that you know it's an academy. It, it's it's you go from your your TWM or, or you don't necessarily yeah. have to be in there into the academy and you learn the. The, the new all, all the little things, like the processes. It's not just – you don't just pay your money and go racing. Yeah. You've got to turn up, learn how to change gear ratios, how to work on a, on the car, you know, you know that sort of stuff. Be part of the team. Get the team to, to build around you and build a team with you, you know. Ideally, I'd like to think that a driver-engineer combo – each person can develop that and go further. So if they want to go to Carrera Cup, they want to go to IndyCar, they want to go to V8 Supercars, Super 2, whatever it is, but you've got that relationship because I feel that that is so important. You look at Adam Debora, he, he's he's involved, you know, Brett Lupton's involved, but you look at Adam and Chaz, mm. you know, that that bond they've got. Like it, it's he, – he, they Chaz doesn't have to say anything to Adam. Yeah. He just looks at him and knows – what it needs. Yeah. You know, and, and I've had that with various drivers, not yeah. all of them, but I've had it with various drivers through the group and, and it's been amazing because of it. So I'd like to think that our, our, our racing Academy has that, yeah. you know, um, Hey, I'm not an engineer, so I'm going to have to get someone to develop that. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. so it, it's that, that's the concept behind it. And that's why we started because I'm sick of seeing kids that, you know, have, have it, Mm. and just make the wrong call at the wrong time. Oh, you know, that team won the championship last year, but that team the year after yeah. doesn't perform. I'm not saying the Racing Academy is going to perform, but it's going to give you the right shot. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's going to teach you the right way. It's not all about winning. It's about having that process and being able to to work hard when things aren't going right, you know, mm. knowing that throwing the – the, the toys out of the, the cot, that mm-hmm. doesn't help, you know. Yeah. Let's sit down, think about it, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Have media training, have social media. Like we didn't we didn't grow up with social media. No. You're you're really good at it. Yeah. I don't you, go you on. guys thought I was annoying as fuck though back at in first, the hundred percent. Yeah. But you got it. Yeah. But still, me, yeah. I'm never on. Yeah. I you you will never get me myself to do anything on it. Yeah, I look at it when I'm bored. Yeah. But I don't put stuff on it. We get people to do our social media. Yeah. But, man, like, I, I hey, I, I only had a conversation with a parent today and I said, you know, the kid's about to take the next step. We need to get, uh, you know, some sports psych. Why? Mm. It's a lot of pressure. Mm. Mm. There's, there's about to be a lot of pressure. Like, we've pulled off a big deal. It's about to be a lot of pressure. So they need to have those tools because – I didn't have that. You didn't have that growing up. We yeah. we just went racing and, you know, you sign with, you know, Red Bull, no yeah. one had done. Yeah. Or even if they did, you're not getting heckled by some keyboard warrior yeah. sitting there carrying on, you know. So that's really hard. And because these kids are growing at such a young age now, you know, like uh, that's – it's a little bit of a, a gripe of mine that how, how young kids go, like 14. Mm. And they're 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 jumping in a race car yeah. and they Brooks actually said that before. She's cr- she's like that's nuts. Obviously, it's, yeah. yeah, it's not that they're going fast. It's just they're still growing mentally. Yeah. That you know, and you spend a big big bickies to go there. You know, yeah. and it's like okay, you go into cars, you go into you know F four or yeah. whatever it is. F four have finally just put in a and F I have finally put in a new new rule that restricts you there, but. Mm. You know, you go and spend four years spending massive amounts of money mm. where you, you you actually hone your craft, not spending as much money, being more mature, being ready for the next step. That's sort of where we're going to make sure that you're actually ready for that next step because some kids are developed at 14. There's no doubt, mm. we're, but most aren't. Yeah. You know, and that's that's the hard part. It's a balancing act and it's, it's understanding them, but – it just gets so hard now with, you know, social media. You know, you need social media training. You need media training. You need to be able to look after your sponsors. You need to be able to find sponsors. You need to be able to look after your team. It, it's it's a big managing job from a 
mm. from such a young age. You're doing like six jobs in one. For that age, they're, they're trying to man, like manufacture in their head. It's, you know, every, Correct. The and whole thing. Yeah. Really all they need to worry about is yeah. driving as fast as they can. Yeah. So I've got to ask about yourself with your dad because you said your dad's still on board. Yep. Did your dad in, integrate that in your life to be like a hard worker to get somewhere? Did, was Or was that just you – Wanting like back then, you wanted to make race cars, right? Or make it in motorsport. Yeah. Was that you more so when you were racing carts as at a young kid? As no, nah, that kid was or? me. That was yeah. me that wanted to make it as a race car driver. Dad's a hard. He's a hard taskman. He yeah. just wanted me to do my best. Yeah. Um. And that's you know he he's definitely put that. But going to race cars, he was probably not on board with that. It wasn't. It wasn't sort of discussed. He he didn't say no, but. Mm. We didn't have the backing, so he was just like, mm, "Yeah, no, nah, not really." But yeah, like it, we, a few things lined up. Um, we got a sponsor, Bosca Tech, and that was that was shared with. Uh, Wasn't that Bright Tech as well? Yeah, Bright Tech yeah. and Brad Jones. Yeah. So I just come back from a Rotax Worlds. I finished fourth, and mm. uh, for, somehow there was a tie, a tie up. I, we had a trade show or something, and Brad was there and. Brad said, oh, my kids just started racing. I yeah. went, oh, yeah, okay. Um, he said, oh, we're going to Canberra next week. And I said, oh, yeah, so am I. So I went and raced and um, said, oh, have a look out. And mm. we went and raced to Canberra and had a cracking weekend. Mm. And uh, he said, oh, you, I've got to get you in a car. Yeah. And I went, oh, okay, that would be awesome. But anyway, cut a long story short, I think it was two days later, I was in Albury coaching Macca mm. and it was like four days later. And I was in a race car in a Formula Ford. Yeah. Um, was this the Van Diemen? Yeah, the yeah. Van Diemen. The I was Tate like, Van Diemen. I was absolute like, weapon of a car. I was going to ask about that car. No, it was a shit box. <laughs> 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 I don't know if it was a shit box or I was, but yeah. man, it was. Um, hey, it was. It was a first opportunity. Was that a Duratec or a Ken? No, it was a Ken. Okay. I think I bent all the valves real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I, I still remember the first day. Wally story come along and yeah. um, Phil Curtis. Yep. Um, I think I was, I was, Wally didn't, Wally didn't, wasn't initially there. It was just Phil Curtis and I turned yeah. up in the supercar truck. It was hilarious. <laughs> um, rolled out. We were okay. Yeah. And I uh, just, oh, the thing understeers, just understeers, understeers. So Wally ended up turning up at lunchtime. He's like, oh, I'll do this and do that. And I remember he was changed the toe in the back and all of a sudden it, it turned. Yeah. And um, oh, I think it's understeering. And he goes, young fellow, it's not fucking understeering. <laughs> You've just got to drive a whole lot better. <laughs> so that was sort of that. And we were going to do a year of that in yeah. state. And I think I did two races. And um, we Victoria went, and New South Wales? Victoria. I did two in Victoria and one, in, one at Eastern Creek. Yep. And then, yeah, the, the plan changed. I think we got a couple of – Brad found a couple of sponsors and – all of a sudden we're doing national and um is in the spectrum first, then you went to Miguel or No, Miguel first. So we yeah. got a Miguel, brand new Miguel, put it together. Um I don't know if you've met him, filthy Phil. Phil Barrett from New Zealand. Um, um he's a bit of a guru, but man, yeah. like he's he's crude. Yeah. Man, he he's out there. Like <laughs> you think Lupo's out there. Yeah. Brett Lupton, but man, Phil is a whoa. How, he's, he's, how good's Lapo's story though with him? Like he raced with F one for. Ah, oh, right? he's. Has best. he told you those stories? He, he doesn't, mate. He does uh, not open up all the things he does. Like I know what he's done, and and you get a couple of drinks into him, and yeah. he starts to, and the amount of stuff he's done is just it, it's cool. But some of his stories, like we we have a laugh all the time because he's deaf, yeah. and uh, you'll you'll say something, and he'll huh what. <laughs> and we're just pissing ourselves laughing. But his knowledge, like he's just – he's old school. Yeah. Like data, don't care. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, we, nah, nah, we'll do this. And like the first day I did it um, at Barbagello with him, with yeah. Elliot, we, we roll out. I think Ellie was there. Ellie and Elliot. Yeah, we mm. went we went over there and um, we roll out. And I'm like, oh, he goes, what do you think? I said, turn one. They're just – they're horrendous. They're line drawn. Yeah. He goes, all right. It was just like go-karts. We just walked down on track and got them on the right line. I'm like, oh, this joint's cool. <laughs> <laughs> is that how, is that how laid, like, is that how, like, laid back WA is in a way? In a way, yeah. Yeah, because you come to Eastern Creek. We only got one Mate, track you never now. get out there. Yeah. You get shot. Yeah. You get a life ban. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely more laid back. And, and 
and within reason. But you know, it's um the training that we can do there is is yeah, it, it, it's really good. And and because Brett just breaks it down so it's so simply, mm. and his understanding of a car, like we we sent that Trans Am car over there, mm. and him and Bryson did a phenomenal job of just understanding the car. I was uh I was in Europe. So I think I was there for two weeks and they were there testing for like four mm. days over two weeks. Was this for business in Europe? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was I was there for talking to Cart Republic, doing a race meeting, and then I, then we had the FIA motorsport game. So yep. I was there for a bit and the car was there and uh, the car went there and it, it looked horrendous mm. on track. And when I got there, I flew back into Perth when I got there, I watched in the first session, like, wow, transform this thing. Yeah. So yeah, like he, he's, he's, um, he's, his processes, he's probably a little bit like me. He doesn't really talk about it that much, no. but just goes out there and he's process and gets a car cranking. So yeah, he, he's, um, he's instrument. I, I would have loved to race for the Ford mm. under him. Uh, we did it the first year in national series. We did it ourselves. Yeah. Uh, out of Brad. BJR. Yeah. yeah. I had an engineer that come in, um, uh, Jason Liftings from New Zealand. He was great. Yeah. Um, but we didn't test that much. You know, we, I, th- I felt we did all right. Mm. Um, I don't, I don't know what I finished in championship. I had a big crash at Gold Coast, huge crash. Mm. Um, that wasn't the old Gold Coast, Gold Coast track, wasn't it? The big one. No, no. Yeah. It was a short one. Yeah. Okay. It was in qualifying and, uh, Liam Sager hit the fence and I, I didn't know, but he lost his brake. So I just, I, uh, the, the Brad had always say, and everybody always say like, aim for the car and I aim for the, <laughs> I aim for the hole, not the car. <laughs> and yeah, I hit him that hard. He, he's, it, it separated the gearbox and the car. Holy shit. It was shit. big. And, um. This is when you're in, oh, that's in Miguel when you're in the yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was big. And like, I just remember going over radar going, yeah, I don't think I've got anything left on this car. And yeah. I remember we stayed up until I think it was 4 a.m. Mm. fixing the car, fix the car. Yeah. I think we still finished fifth around or something. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like I, I reckon I did permanent back damage then. Yeah. That was a big crash. It, it hurt hard. So from then I've never – my back's never been the same since then. Mm. Um, but, yeah, and then the year after we started with Spectrum, um, got lucky round one and won it. Yeah. Um, what do you think of Mike Ballin? Because that he they, he works different, uh, obviously. Because he's in yeah, the he, he's different. Like he's I, quiet Mike's, too. Mike's a guru, but he's quiet. Yeah, and he doesn't tell you what's going on. Yeah. So I, I felt we the tire changed that year. Mm. We rolled out at round one, and we, we were reasonable. I knew going into round two we weren't great, um, but it was a year we just we needed to to switch on. We we needed results yeah. and. Round one was obviously really good. Um, to be fair, without Cam Waters, and I think it was Nick Foster. Yeah, Cam Waters and Nick Foster hit the fence, so yeah. I was probably going to finish fourth or fifth. That's, well, you were in, you were, you were racing when Dave Sarah had a crack too, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, so it was it was a good crop, you know. Um, but that that round we probably would have finished fourth or fifth. Yeah. Um, I got lucky. We won both races, but not on speed. Mm. Um. And then round two, we were, we were just, we were horrendous. Yeah. Um, and that was probably not through a lack of trying from people. The car just wasn't wasn't quite right. But in saying that, Cotto had worked out how to how to get the the spectrum going, but it wasn't yeah. winning. So then, yeah, we made the decision to um. Well, I didn't make the decision. Kim and Brad made the decision to jump out of that, and mm. then uh, we jumped into. Well, I had no drive for a little bit. Yeah. And I think the week before the round three at Eastern Creek. Were you were you coaching in the middle of that? Yeah, I was on, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. when it all started. So yeah. I started coaching in that. Yeah. With well, well, it started two years before with Macca, but then it sort of it rolled on to a couple of other people as well. So I was doing that. So I remember I won Adelaide Saturday, jumped mm. on a plane. I think Brad, yeah, Brad put me on the moped. So we did the media. Um, whatever it is, the conference. The conference, yeah. Saturday night. Jumped on the back of the moped. Brad was riding. I was in my race suit. Yep. Grabbed my backpack. Hmm. He rode me to the airport. Yeah. And I was in my suit and I just made the plane. 
In your suit. Oh, wow. In my suit with crap all over me. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I flew to Sydney. Yeah. Stayed in Sydney overnight. Jumped on a plane to Dubbo. Yeah. And the Pro Tour was on. So Rotax Pro Tour. So Macca was racing there. And Donnie McLean was actually looking after Macca. Until and, you got there. Yeah, until I yeah, got there. Yeah. So then I was there for Sunday. I think I slowed him down. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that was that was a bit surreal. Um, but, yeah, so I was still coaching then and then. That was Top Cart. Was the Macca in a Top Cart then? Uh, yeah. We were Top Cart the year after. We were in Intrepid. Oh, we were Arrow. Mm. We were Arrow Intrepid. I'm not sure. We were jumping a bit because we were looking, we were clutching straws. To be yeah. perfectly honest, you gotta you gotta talk to me about. Obviously, I'm finding this the Europe thing. How you traveling to Europe for Cart Republic? You gotta explain to me how being a dealer works with a cart brand. Like obviously being a dealer and a driver coach and a team because I have no knowledge of that. Yeah, so that sort of that all um, come about probably through COVID. Yep. Um, I was developing Arrow work with Arrow closely. Mm. Um, I sent Cody to, he was in America. Mm. So he got offered to drive uh, Kart Republic and for Eric Jones who runs Kart Sport North America. So he yeah. was um, Kart Republic over there. So he was over there racing over there um, and then COVID sort of hit. Everybody in the world was like, oh, we left him there for a bit and yeah. then I remember being in the pool one day. So he was in the pool with me with – two of the boys yeah. and she's like, it's getting bad. And then uh, Cody's mum, Sharon was there and I'm like, okay, right. I'll, yeah. I'll call him out. We'll call him back. And uh, what was his original plan there? Cause he was meant to race there, wasn't he? Yeah. So he was going to oh. race there and be there full time mm. and sort of take over the running of that team. Yeah. And then when he got there, he was, he was training with Will Power heaps, doing heaps of stuff. So he was going to race carts um, and sort of be a professional kart driver. He had the option of doing that in Europe or America. Yeah, right. And we chose America because Europe is a heart slog mm. and the language barrier, uh, weight, you've got to be like, you just got to be a whippet. You'd be perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so we sort of went there yeah. and then, yeah, we got him back. Like, I mean, when we got him back, I think when he was on the plane – they changed the rule or he just got off the plane. They changed the rule to snap, you know, you go into um, the quarantine, yeah. hotel quarantine. So you only had to quarantine at home. Yeah, And right. we live next door to each other. So, you know, yeah. his home was very big. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, so it's uh, he was lucky. And then through that, they then sent a cart back. Mm. And that's when we started testing because we he the plan was he was always going to go back. We didn't think it was going to last that long. And he had a Cut Republic, Cut Republic in America. Or was that yeah, yeah. So he yeah. had a Cut Republic in America. So they sent it back for him, sent a brand new one for him to start to train. And then we yeah. we were testing, and I'm like, man, this thing's fast. Yeah. <laughs> and we test it three or four times. Ended up testing like 12, 15 times, and each time the result was the same. So then Dino was in contact with me. Through Co about Cody, yeah. and then yeah, it just snowballed. So then we we did the deal, um, and then there was there were issues, but we got uh, the FA then got released um, early a year early. So FA wasn't going to be released. Yeah, Fernando Alonso. Cup. Yeah, the so Fernando Alonso. So he went from OTK to Cart Republic. Yep. Um, and then the Will Power Cart. So we were supposed to get Cart Republic. There was contractual problems anyway. So then they released. Fernando Alonso to us early. So we were the first in the world to grab it, mm. WPK. Um, and, yeah, it just – it took off. The mm. cart was good. Um, we got results straight away, so it took off. Then the year later we, we added Cart Republic. So last year we added Cart Republic. And, yeah, it's – um, it's the, the brand is great. Dino shares the same sort of passion. Like he's probably the smartest in, in karting there is. Like it's yeah. just his vision – his understanding of what makes something go fast. Like he's cool. He, he's a lot of fun to be around when you, mm. when we go over and we go to a test, like apparently he doesn't go to test days, but every time I'm there, we go to a test day together. Yeah. So, but yeah, like it's, it's fun to be around because the, the conversations are, are very, um, you know, they're, they're energizing. We're talking so about how to make it go fast. Was Cart Republic Dino beforehand or is it? No. Nah, so how did that all happen? So Cart, Cart Republic was nothing. So Dino was at, where, where did he start? Wherever he started, mm. um, then he was at CRG. Yep. CRG won world championships. 
He left CRG, yep. went to Zanardi. Zanardi won world championships. Went back to CRG, they won world championships. <laughs> <laughs> then he started cut in public. And I think, well, in Dino's own words, yeah. it it all happened too fast. It got too big. It was supposed to be small. Yeah. And all of a sudden he's getting orders from all around the world. So the quality was not not where it needed to be. So, yeah, you know, yeah. coming to through DPE and I remember being with Arrow and and I, at first I'm like, oh, this is a raw deal. Like, <laughs> I, I was Cosmic and Arrow with them. And why can't I have that? Yeah. Anyway, cut a long story short, it's probably good that I didn't because they weren't that good. You know, the yeah, quality yeah. was sort of, there was a good cart and a bad cart, good cart, bad cart. So now he's really got that under control. He's got his production line, everything's working. Um, so I got it at the right time, an opportune time. So, yeah, that's how that started. Then Rosberg, he's still, well, he, he every F1, oh, well, not every F1 driver, but, man, mm. he, there's a list on his wall. It's like Max Verstappen's driven for him, you know. Lewis Hamilton, MBM yeah. was Lewis Hamilton and Rosberg, yeah. you know. Um, and, and I asked him, I'm like, who's the best you've ever seen? Oh, that'd be an interesting question. It was really yeah. cool. So it come, it, it, he said best driver. Yeah. I've ever seen or best driver to make F1 I've ever seen. Oh, okay. And I said best driver and he goes, you wouldn't even know him. Right. I'm like, okay. <laughs> wow. Well. So he, 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 but best yeah. F1 driver, he's got massive, massive plaudits on Nick DeVries. He really? He yeah. is amazing. He said he's the real, real deal. So it'll be interesting. That's it. We'll see. That kind of makes sense in, in a way for the moment now because DeFries turned up in his first race and then made it to wow. the top 10. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like at, yeah. at Monza or every race. He was sick. Yeah. 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 He's just a little pocket rocket. Yeah. And, and and like he said, Max is good, but he said Max is worth ethic. And, you know, it's driven in from his old man. You can see it mm. from a mile off. Like the kid's good. But yeah. I think he's been he's been working harder than everybody since the age of five. Yeah. You know, you go uh, – uh, this is all hearsay, but you go to his – his old man's workshop, he still does Pex's engines. Yeah. Like, and his engines are just, you go to World Championship and Pex brothers who were best friends with Verstappen, but, and man, those things, just, they, they may as well do monos. Yeah. They've got that much power, <laughs> you know, like, and it, it's, it takes that sort of commitment. So, you know, DeVries, did he have that? I don't know. I, he said Lewis was always good. Mm. Um, you know, Nico worked hard. I think we all can see that. But, but is it kind of like car racing where each karting generation, you can't really decipher who is the best? Or is it? Or is it? Yeah, I don't reckon you could. You can't, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's hard. You know, people yeah. say Senna was the best. Well, I don't know. I didn't, I don't even remember watching him. Yeah. You know, like it's Michael Schumacher. Now it's, it was Lewis Hamilton. Now it's uh, Verstappen. You know, they're all good. Yeah. Put them all together. Who knows? It's kind of weird though because when we were racing, Ricardo was racing carts with us. 100%. And then now he's out of a drive, but we think of it like yesterday when he was starting as a rookie. But the kids coming through now, I think he's like their Mark Webber in a way. For, yeah. You know, I remember for, like, yeah, for yeah, us, yeah. Webber was on the scene. Yeah, Webber, Webber was – I used to love Webber, you know, like and, and it's funny, you know, Ricardo, I remember racing. I remember running him off the track at, <clears> at Adelaide because he was going to beat me. I'm like, oh, I'm not this little prick. He's not going to beat me. <laughs> I ran him off the track. And, um, you know – Hey, he yeah. made it and did a ripping job doing yeah. it. It's it's disappointing seeing him where he's at. Like that's another one, you know. Just yeah. uh, didn't get the opportunity. He felt like he should have, or, or and it just you know wrong foot, wrong time. And it, it, he's now sitting on the sidelines. Hey, but he's still making plenty of cash. So yeah. Yeah. I, I <laughs> wouldn't be complaining if I was doing that either. <laughs> yeah, just sitting on the sidelines, just hopping a car for every now and then for a media appearance and stuff like Don't that. Don't worry, Bathurst. Yeah. I'll be reminding him that. Yeah. I got to. I got to ask. Where did um Where did you grow up, Tommy? And a bit, a bit about your background, your parents and stuff. Uh so I grew up at a place called Varaville, which was about ten minutes from Iron Park. Yep. So when the supercars were on, I could hear them. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was it was a cool place. Oh, so you and your Bart growing up? Basically. Yeah, not too. He was the other side. I was the other yeah. side. So I was in between Liverpool and Campbelltown. Yep. On a mountain range there. So yeah. So it was um, yeah. I'm an only child, so I grew up playing by myself. Mm. Um, probably why I don't play well with others now. Um, <laughs> and probably why you shoved Ricardo off the track. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, mum and dad. So mum uh, was uh, a really good chef. She taught. She ran TAFE. I think she was one of the bosses there. Mm. Um, and dad was a marketing manager in different companies. So dad used to race motocross bikes. And yeah, was, like, right. properly good. Like he – 
he would probably should have won world championships but fell off and hurt himself and he was proper good. So yeah. that's where the racing stems from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that I I wanted to race motorbikes. But yeah, right. I was too dangerous. Like I, I remember when I was so I've got a scar across here, and that's from when oh. I was three or four. I rode through a barbed wire fence. Oh. And that was like Christmas Day, I think. Oh. Um so yeah, but I was probably if I was wild in a go-kart, I must have been wild on a bike. So yeah. I wasn't allowed to race bikes. Um, so then there was a compromise, and we used to go to the high cart track with dad. Mm. And I had to beat him and he pumped me off whenever I was in a place to beat him because if I beat him, mm. I was then allowed to start racing go-karts. Yeah, right. <laughs> so he used to punt me and then finally we did it. So, yeah, so I started late. I think I was I think I was 11 or 12, so I started quite late. Yeah. Um, oh, so you started when I started, basically yeah. at the same age. Yeah, yeah. so I think it, it's not a bad thing. No. Um, so I went straight into rookies. Uh, but, yeah, mum and dad have always – mum didn't come to track. She doesn't doesn't like the bullshit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's sort of where that was at. That's sort of where, where I grew up. I went to – But do you know what I liked about your dad, though? He kept you, when we were racing together, very focused. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because unlike you, my parents were never really at the track. I'd always had a driver, yeah. coach or someone there for me because yeah. that's just the way my family grew up in. But yeah. – it was, I just respected you and your dad though. Like you turned up to the track wanting a decent result. Do you know what I mean? And your dad just kept you out of the shit. You know what I mean? As much oh, as possible. Do you know 100%. What I mean? Like he, I, I look back at it and, you know, we were, we were at each other's throat. There's mm. no, there's no doubt. But you look back at it and yeah, it was, we went there to go racing and we were there to, to get a result. So yeah. I worked on the card. I did all that, you know, um, the only thing I look back at and I probably didn't do enough of is be able to switch off. Now, mm. that's sort of what I always make, make – I try to bring along to the kids. Hey, you go to the track, do your job, but then switch off. Have a good time with your mates, but there's a time and a place, you know. But, yeah, like I, I was lucky that way. Um, I was probably unlucky in a lot of ways that dad was setting up the go-kart. Mm. Um, but I learned a lot from him, you know, and it, it, it's funny how things go, but – I'm still in the sport. Dad still comes along. He does all my KZ engines. Yep. Um, we blow up and have arguments over over carburation because <laughs> I don't care if we're about to blow the engine up. Yeah. And he does. Yeah. There he, I, I joke there he's babies. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but it, it's just because we're passionate. You know, yeah. like it, we want the best result. He doesn't want to blow an engine up. I want the thing to go fast. Yeah. So – yeah, that, that's sort of the background. Yeah. And with I've, as we were saying over lockdown, you he had said Cart Republic come in and that whole deal had come in. I, I remember watching videos clearly on social media because there was not much to do back then. But you guys are literally bringing in trucks full of carts and selling them as they come out. It's still going on. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it's a container. So we get 50 carts in a container mm. and what do we got? Got one that arrived last week. So mm. I get my hands on it Friday. Yep. Hopefully. Is so this we, a Republic or an F- FA or a uh, – It's a split. So it's it's like probably 65% Cut Republic, uh, 30% mm. FA and then the rest WPK. Um, yeah. so, oh, so there's like a different chassis like – No, they're stri- all the same. Oh, they're different uh, colours. Okay. So we got silver, light yep. blue, dark blue. Yep. Um, so, yeah, we've got 50 carts arrive. We land 6 a.m. Friday morning. Mm. We'll be straight to the workshop. Hopefully it gets there. They'll all be unloaded. Every cart's pre-sold. Yeah. We've got a container landing two weeks later, 50 carts, same sort of thing, all pre-sold. Do they we- go nationwide? Yep. Far out. Yep. They just go out the door nationwide and they just So we, we, are pre- we, we have four containers on the water now. Yep. No, three on the water, one about to leave. Yep. And they're all sold out. Like, oh, I wish I could get stock, but they can't make them quick enough right wow. now. So we, we, you know, the cart on the the, the tire manufacturer changed their Lacan. Mm-hmm. Um, on the MG, the go kart was good. Lacan, it's even better. So it, it's taken a little while, but you know, uh, everybody, you know, uh, I've got great dealers. We get good results, and it, it's like the OTK era. Mm-hmm. So when when you were racing, I was racing. You know, yeah. towards the end, it was. If you weren't in that decay, you were screwed. <laughs> yeah. So it's sort of that's that's what sort of it, it's not it's not you screwed, but they're easy. You yeah. know, you don't need the five different axles like other manufacturers. 
Oh, use, really? Yeah, we, we only use two different grades. Wow. Yeah. Normally it's just one and that's what standard what comes in the car. Does maybe. Arrow still use multiple axles or not? Or is yeah. it or is it or is it the generation now of carting like No, nah, like every other every down. other manufacturer still uses heaps, but but what? we just find that two work. Yeah. Okay. That's sort of it. it. It's very easy. I give you the the what 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 we're racing with. Mm. Um, you know, what what we win on Sunday, you call me and I'll email you it. Yeah, set up. That's that's what it is. You know, it, it's is that from you and Cody doing a lot of R and D though to to get pretty much manufacture that set up in a way, yep. so it's easy to sell as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Wow. It, 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 a successful race team and and the race team that we we do like we like we said we just come from Dubbo. Mm. I learned new different stuff again, you know, and and then we. I then pass that on to all the dealers. You mm. know, there's videos, there's all that stuff to them. They've got access to it. Like it wasn't just my camp. It was uh, every dealer was invited, come along. So my WA dealer come along, my Queensland dealer come along. Victorian one tried to, but he was, he'd already had a holiday booked. Yeah. My South Australian dealer come along. They come along and we learn together. You know, you, you understand the concept together because that's the biggest thing. You know, this card is so different. It's not like any other card. So mm. you go and set it up like another card. Oh, it's got understeer. Normally take rear grip out. Ours, it doesn't work that way. You add rear grip. Yeah, right. So you can run yourself down the, the garden path pretty quick. Yeah. But once you understand that that concept, oh, okay, right, this part of the corner. So the deal is listen, and I'm like, okay, what part of the corner has got understeer? Oh, it's initially, it's understeering and assist. Oh, okay, well, well, we'll do this to add grip. Bang, goes out, bang, it's fast. And I'm like, oh, wow, I yeah. wouldn't have done that. Yeah. It's like, oh, how'd you know to do it? I don't go trial and error. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that I'm smarter, it's yeah. just trial and error. Yeah. You know, and that's, you, you get your tendencies. It's no different to a race car. Yeah. You get your tendencies. I remember racing with uh, with Degar- Nathan Tagani. Yeah, Tiggs, you, yeah. Yeah, Tiggs. Yeah, he was, he was obviously, he was a decent club carter, but yeah. you transformed him as well. But I remember, I remember being cocky at Newcastle with Galva, I think at the time. <laughs> and we were like, we, Galva was like, oh, it's all right. Let them two just practice all day. We'll be fine. But the way you coach, which shows now, because you just went to Dublin and did the exact same thing, you send them out there and you just make them do laps after laps after yeah. lap and you'll just throw different things at the cart. And that is a way to, because I don't know, I think, in some, you know, drivers' heads or drivers' coaches' heads, they'll be like, "This is the setup, and that's the way. We, you, that's the way you're going to drive to that cart." Yeah. With my autism, I couldn't drive to that setup, yeah. right? So I obviously had to. I was more of a it's like a smooth steerer, which is yeah. what people say in Formula Ford. Yeah. Where Tagani might have been a more aggressive steerer, but the way you just, I was just amazed that day. I was like, "Gavo, why aren't we doing that?" Because you were out, you were out there with Tagani, lap after lap after lap, and then. Bang, two years later, he was Australian champion. Do you yeah, know what my, I mean? my anxiety gets better on me for someone else on track and yeah. I'm not. So <laughs> I have to beat him on track. Yeah. Um, yeah, 100%. Like it's just, it's trial and error. you got to find out what works mm. because there's not a certain setup. Like uh, I'm, you're exactly right in saying some driver coach, some engineer, some this. No, that's it. Mm. That's, that's the way the car's got to be set up. Mate, if there's someone in the same brand of go-kart winning, and I'm not, I'm going to go and look at that thing. And if someone gives me a tape measure, I'm going to measure everything and put it in the go-kart. Yeah. Like, I don't care if it's my idea or not. You, you, the thing that matters is going fast. Yeah. You've got to do the best you can. And if it's someone else, like, well, well done. You're smarter than I am. Yeah. It's it's that ego thing, that, that sort of pisses me off, to be honest. You know, a lot yeah. of people get an ego, oh, you know, but but uh, that, it, it shouldn't work. Mm. It doesn't matter. It does. See so, you saying that actually we did that last year and when I was leading the championship after the first round, it rained at Wakefield Park and that was literally the last Wakefield Park race, right? Yep. And Bart and I were like, oh, it's all right. It's not going to rain for the rest of the weekend. Yep. Sure enough, Brooke turns up because yep. I've had anxiety for Pissed the rest of it rain. and a piss down rain the whole weekend. <laughs> and I was like, oh, we should have gone out there. Do you remember? <laughs> it just starts that – if you don't start off with that smooth transition into the weekend, I think. Oh, like, mate, you, you, like, the, you, you, your mental state unravels. Yeah. Like if you miss that session, like to bring your mental state back. Yeah. Is hard. Yeah. And, and and that on top, like, man, like you would have just been like, oh. And for the rest of the weekend, you think, I oh, should have, I should have. Yeah. You can't change it, but, you know, I'll beat you the next time Rainy went on track. Oh, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> just bar, bar after that, every uh, bar that one mistake that we made together, that was Bart and I's choice. Yep. 
he's basically sent me out rain, hail or shine uh, just after COVID and be like, mate, you got to get like you actually. Don't worry. That's the way thing. he was coaching me. He same was like, thing. I've, I've done the same thing. Yeah. I did it once. I'm like, doesn't, nah, nah, we, we don't want to screw the gear. We're good enough in the wet. If it does rain, but it's not going to rain. Well, guess what? It rained next day and we got our ass handed to us. Yeah. Ever since then, it rained. You're going on track. Yeah. But we got new engines. Oh, well, they're still making them. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's not give this opportunity up because if it does rain, we're going to look stupid. Yeah. Is, uh, John McCorkin, I said in my first ever episode in, in on my podcast. I spoke to him today. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I was trying to buy a car off him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hopefully. Or oh, the Mustang. Yeah, I was fine uh, now for a customer what he what he had. Yeah. Well, he said- He's a the, legend. He is. He's a great guy. He kickstarted the podcast, really. Yeah. Um, but he said- it cost ideally around 200K to race like for a proper team nationally. Yeah. Is that still the case? I would say so, yeah. Yeah, okay. It depends on the level. Oh, is that karting? That's karting, yeah. Nah, nah, no. uh, we're not that. No. Nah. Honestly, we're, we're less than that. You, you can halve that. Yeah. Yeah, like it, it's nationally to, to win a championship with, with nothing, mm. nothing left unturned, you can do it under 100. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like it's you, you. Some people may spend two hundred, mm. but that's spending on and that's more. Like, that's like testing and stuff like that. And, no, that's um, testing included. Like yeah. really, that that's that's probably buying stuff you just don't need to. That that's someone being ill advised. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like it, it means you're buying stuff for the sake of buying stuff. Yeah. You you, you know I, I always say to my customers, mm. trust me when I say to buy something, you buy it. If yeah. I don't tell you to buy it, don't buy it. <laughs> because normally, like, there's there's, there's 10 Dave Sarah engines still out there being sold. Yeah, right. He only had one. Yeah. But they're still being sold for 10 grand each, yeah. you know. So he, he, it's a perfect example of that. Oh, I've got a Dave Sarah engine. Oh, yeah. Did you unbolt it off the go-kart? No. <laughs> well, unless you unbolt it off there, you don't know. Yeah. You know, so he, it's, it's having – a good group of people around you that know that they are going to give you the right advice. You know, it's no different to a swim swimmer. Like you're a swimmer. You had to have your coach at your strength and conditioning coach. You had to have your nutritionist. You had to have, you know, all these things right. And the right group around you, because one of them gives you the wrong information, yeah. you, you, you know, it brings everything unstuck. Mm. So to win that, that's my belief, you, you know, it's ex- it's more expensive than when we when we did it, but there were guys spending more money than what yeah. what we were to do it. Um, I remember there was guys flipping chassis all the time. Yeah, and that's a like, that's a misconception in my yeah. team. Like everybody says, oh, you fl- flipping chassis, flipping carts. You know, you you getting that go kart, you, you'll be flipping all the time. Well, mm. no, the, you, we Zach Hurd's a perfect example. Yeah, he tested on the weekend in a chassis that's three seasons old. Yeah. I keep on looking at it going, man, that thing has done a million like <laughs> And it's basically hitting the ground. There. It's fast. It's yeah, it's fast. But yeah. he won a won a championship in a in a car, was brand new at the start of the year, did all the races, all the testing, no problem. Yeah. Won the championship. Yeah, there's guys in the team that will re chassis during the year. Is mm. it needed? Not necessarily. But if if you've got it, mm. if you've got that sort of budget where you can, you know, spend yeah. that extra little bit. Is it going to give you a quarter of a tenth? Possibly. Mm. But it's not necessary to win it. it, yeah. it it's, but if you've got the budget there to, to tick and dot all the I's and cross all the T's, well, you and I would both do it. Mm. So it, it's, it's that way. But it, it, motorsport's expensive. Yeah. It, it's just you can spend in areas you just don't need to spend in. Yeah. Did you work your way when you were racing cars yourself to certainly budget your way through to – you got to Utes, right? You actually yeah. – didn't you reserve drive essentially for Pithra or how did that work? Yeah. Um, so I was lucky. So Brad picked me up and Brad Brad funded it. Yeah. So, you know, like we're, we're family. The way way we are is, is that's that's the way we are. You know, Macca, Brad, um, Melly, mm-hmm. um, Monty, Matty, we, we, that, that's the Jones family and, and yeah. I'm part of it. Like And – uh, I'm very grateful and will will be forever in Brad's debt because mm. he made me a better person in a lot of ways and taught me a lot of things, you mm. know, and I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now in a sense without, without his input. Mm. Um, 
he really helped with that. So I was very lucky in the fact that that they funded it and I, I coached Macca, lived with Macca. Like mm. I, I lived with the family for, like I said, four years. Mm. So we did fall on the forward. Um, but did you come in with like a budget originally, like 70K and that we'll spend that that year? No. No, okay. I was so lucky. Yeah, right. You so know. Brad, because you, you were helping Macca. I was right? helping Macca. So yeah. it was a pro, you know, it was yeah, pro yeah, rata. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It, it's, it's worth this much or, or whatever. But Brad, Brad was great. He mm. taught me how to get sponsors. He brought me in the workings of the team. So I worked at the team. Yep. I worked on my own car. I went to all the supercar races. I looked after Macca. So did Mac, you test the supercar in the end or not? Yeah, yeah, I tested the supercar a few times. Okay. Um, the idea was always I was going to go supercars. So yeah. we did the form the forward, and then we were trying to go to super two, and, and it just sort of it just didn't line up, you know. Yeah. Like there was the funding was falling out, like that. They, there was no funding. Um, we said we, I think the the wording was we could do three rounds or something, and it was just like, uh, and then, um. I'd sort of given up on it to be perfectly honest. Yeah. And I, I remember sitting down with Brad and I said, okay, so when am I going to be a supercar driver? Like I had a contract, everything that I was, I was yeah. their driver. I said, so when am I going to actually but, make money? Yeah. Like I, I have all my yeah. living expenses, but, but you know, I'm 21 or something. Mm. When am I actually going to be able to race supercars for sure and make money? Yeah. That's like how long's a piece of string. <laughs> so I sort of I got to the point where I was I was frustrated with the world. Yeah. Um, I was frustrated with not being able to progress. I, I felt like I was fast enough in a Formula Ford. Like we won races, we podiumed a lot, I crashed into a lot of people. I didn't have great anger management. Yeah. Um, and that that was a, a weakness of mine. Um, but I felt we were good enough to go. Now in retrospect, I, I wasn't. Mm. Um, but in the time I felt I was. So then essentially we sort of, I, I actually, I said, uh, Mac was going to form the Ford. I said, okay, I'm going to start, you know, doing some coaching. Um, I moved back home and then all of a sudden the Pitha thing come up and they said, be at Eastern Creek on the 23rd of December mm. for a ride day, did a ride day. And then, yeah, so Pitha won the championship and then he was only doing one round of thing. And Brad organized it but didn't really tell me, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Mm. Um, and then I did two rounds in that. Um, great experience. Chris is just a legend, like yeah. really good guy. Darren Park ran it and was just – it was a professionally run – like Darren well, Park, the ex-GT driver. But no, 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 no. He's, um, he was involved he, – he's got a, a business. Oh, I forget what, mm. Anyway, he, he's just a good dude. Yeah. Um, loves, loves motorsport. Is always back pitha. Yeah. Um. They had the ice brake car, so I, I did that. Um. And it, it was a really good car. It, it was a good team. Uh. Crashed at Bathurst in qualifying. That wasn't so. What good. do you What do you think of the current Utes these days? Because everyone's against them because they're not like the old ones. What's your take on that? What, I don't like watching them. You don't. Like, no. You're just not interested in them. Is they there sound a- like crap? So. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that that's the other question? Like some people believe it's a path to supercars. Do you believe super utes is a path to supercars? No. Yep. Is that, here we go. That answers that question. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no. So but why do you think that then just to get your opinion on it? They're not fast enough. Yeah. They, they move around too much. They're, 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 they're a fair way from the platform of a supercar. I'm not, I, I'm not to say that they're, they're, that's just my opinion. They're, yeah. they're very different to it, to a supercar, you know, like um, your CFG is very high. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know enough about them to be perfectly mm. honest, but I don't think their braking package is that great. Yeah. Um, it's not a slick tire. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, the list sort of goes on. Um, it's it's under the right card. It's on supercar, yeah. uh, on the supercar support category, but that that also entails that. In your it's opinion, though, expensive. Do you think because you're doing the Trans Am thing, should they flip the the Utes out for the Trans Am and have th- that Super Three, Super Two no, supercar? Too expensive for Trans Am okay. then. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you're on the, as soon as you're a support package, yeah, you, you, your entry fees go through the roof. Yeah. You know, uh, the reason Trans Am so good is, is bang for buck. Yeah, you know the cars are relatively cheap. They're not cheap, but they're relatively cheap. Mm. Um, hey, they can get better. Like the the brake package on it's rubbish. Mm. Um, but everybody's got the same. Mm. You know, there's a lot of good things about that. You know, you go and stuff an engine. It's a handback program. Um, now it's got a controlled shock. 
uh, you can have a car that's from 2018 and car that's from 2021, or I think we've got a 16 to 21. Yeah. The 16 right now is faster. I'm not saying the 21's no, no worse. They've got different setups, but they're, they're the same. Yeah. Um, engines are all the same. You know, like there's a really good – and bang for buck. It kind of reminds me of the early 90s supercars though, the way that they – you know what I mean? Like They move around. Yeah. Um, they, they, they're they good things, you know. I feel like oh, – I want to race one. That's why I love it. That's why I like oh, talking about it. I'll give you a test. <laughs> awesome. Uh, hey, Dan, Dan is like, <laughs> no, you're coming he, he will give test. a lung or something to drive nah, one yeah. of these. <laughs> nah, when we go to test at Winton, you're coming. Oh, sweet. Um, there you go. There's they're, Dan. They're, they're cool things. Like yeah. they, uh, we got to we got to fix a few things. They look gnarly under brakes. They move around like nothing else. So yeah. there was something going on, but that would bump steer or something. But um, yeah. they're, they're – they're good cars. They're, yeah. they're good, solid cars, and I just feel they're a, they're an even platform. And so many one make series are riddled with riddled with red tape. Red tape. Yeah. Okay. A lot of grey areas. Yeah. And a lot of grey areas people go into. Yeah. Okay. So you know, like it's. You, you, is this you like 86s and stuff like that and Aussie race cars? Yeah, the whole just, lot. Yeah. Like if, if you're controlled that way, and it, it's very controlled, but. Because um, you would have, back then, you would have gone, when you were racing yourself through those ranks, you would have seen all that stuff. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And then obviously applied it to your drivers now, who where you're putting them into. 100%. And that's, that's why we avoid a few of them. Because, you know, I, I look at bang for buck. How many laps you, you got. You got three dollars. How far can you go? How much experience? You look at the gears. You look at waters. You look at all those guys. They're in something all the time. Mm. You've got to be in something. You've got to have experience. The gears, car control is just unbelievable. Waters, you know, Chaz, car control experiences everything. No one has other than Feeney mm. or Lowndes. I, I think back probably to Lowndes as one in their first year. Yeah, you know. Probably not many people had Brock's <laughs> Brock's yeah. opportunity jumping in a in a car that won yeah. championships, you know. But hats off to him; he still won. Yeah. He did it, and he had that. But Brock does a lot of days at Norwell, does a lot of driving, mm. and it's essential. So I look at where I'm going to place somebody. How many laps can I do? You know, is it an even playing field? Mm. Am Am I going to get bang for my buck? Am I going to be able to, you know? Put tyres on the car. There's no use being able to race a series and not do it properly. If mm. you're going to do it, you need to be able to do it properly because otherwise, you know, John is a perfect mm. example. McCorkendale, mm. the poor bastard, he raced a series, but he doesn't have the luxury of being able to go, okay, you really had four sets of tyres this weekend. Can't afford that. I'm going to go two. Yeah. You're always playing catch up. Yeah. The guy's good enough, but you're playing catch up, mm. you know, and if you're if you can't afford to do it, and this sounds crazy and probably horrible, but if you can't afford to do it at that top level, well, and and being able to be competitive, you, you're selling yourself short. So mm. I find that so hard. So I feel that the, the budgets that, that my guys have got, they're they're the right budget for this class. Yeah. And for their first introductory, like I, I now make them do Formula Ford, so mm. they do a year of Formula Ford, state Formula Ford in WA. Yeah. Really Brooke cost was, effective. Brooke was actually asking about that. She was like, all Tommy's guys go to supercars, but they seem to do Formula Ford as well. And yeah, what we were you saying? Tra- yeah, because what is, you know, like we were, Dan and I were talking about the path used to be carts, Formula Ford, because Formula Ford was on the supercars bill, so you always saw them there. And that's where a lot of the X, well, we know, or not X, even the current V8 supercar yep. drivers have come mm-hmm. through. Um, what sort of categories do you look at with your drivers as you're explaining? And the other question I had was, you said there's ones you miss, obviously one of them being super utes. Is there any other categories that you miss between um, all of these? So I stuffed up in the early days with with the first sort of guys with Fife um, and Morse. Yep. And I sort of went, uh, Morse, he went the 86 route. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He spent a lot of money over two years, Yeah, um, in my opinion. Um, yep. And that's just because he, he didn't get the right car. So there's still that element. Yeah. Um, you got to have the right car. Is this Formula Ford or 286? 86. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that's changed, yeah. but yeah. that's the way it was. Um, and with Fifey, I sent him straight to Super 3. Mm. And he did well straight away. But when the going got tough and there were things that were hard, we sort of 
we miss those essential steps, you know. Um, and and I feel like that was that's on me. That was my mistake in saying, "Hey, let's do this," and we probably weren't quite ready. So now I get them to do a year of KZ top line karting. Yep. Um, there's there's no harder thing. Like you will not drive anything harder after you drive KZ. Yeah. Like even Fernando, like where it, when I speak speak to Alonso, he mm. says the hardest thing mm. is a KZ. Harder than their one, which car. is a gearbox cut. Yeah, yeah. So is, yeah. I make him do that. I make him do a year of senior competition. Yeah, because in juniors, I feel like you—they're good drivers. Yeah, they're probably some of the fastest, but you get away with a lot. You get to seniors and you get some of the old heads, and they—they they teach you a few lessons. So they—they mm. they make you uh, combat hardened. So I, I, this is the way I do it, and then I put you in a form of forward. Mm. The the. We don't really have anything else. There's no F4. The, the F4 we do have is, is in my opinion, uh, overgripped and underpowered. Yep. Um, where with a former Ford, you know, yeah, I know everything's going paddle shift and et cetera, et cetera. Mm. You know, auto blip, this, that. You get into a former Ford, you got none of that crap. Yeah. You have to learn to go across a gate. You have to force speed, you know. You have to learn to blip the throttle, you know, heel and toe, you right foot brake most people, you know, those sorts of things are so important mm. and you may never, ever use it. Yeah. But what happens when your auto blip doesn't work? Yeah. What happens when you're in the middle of Le Mans yeah. and yeah. all of a sudden you've got this problem yeah. and you've got to blip the throttle, you've got to heel and toe. It, it, it's, it's, it's still there. If you've done that, nothing's going to be harder. Mm. You know, you need to have car control. I'm sorry to drive from the forward. That's that's the easiest way to learn mm. car control. You've got to float the thing. You've won. Yeah, yeah. you got to get in. You have got to be aggressive but smooth. Mm. You got to be able to carry speed. You got your braking techniques needs to be spot on. If it's not spot on, you waste time. That's why we go to Will, uh, um, Brett. over to Barbagello, yeah. Brett. Mate, it's the biggest stop in the country. You know, from the forward, you go down that hill, you're doing 200 clicks and you're stopping the thing. You learn brake technique and that's all I bang on about. The kids that hate me for it. Mm. I think it's so important because like, uh, we've talked about it as well and it happens in a lot of like going back to what we are saying with the technology and social media. In a way, it's like comparing your, your analogue to your digital mm. and – what we're seeing now is a lot – I saw this, I said, to Dan in animation and we were saying when we were in production hiring, people are skipping that step of learning to life draw yep. and then just going straight into digital and expecting it to do it for them. But yep. if you don't understand, like, all the mechanics of the body and everything, you can't do it. Yep. And it's the same in Formula Ford. If you're not understanding, like you said, that feel and that way that you just don't get in other cars with paddle shift. 100%. It's a, it's a thing that, yeah, it's very important. The fundamentals, like a house, mm. it's a foundation. Yeah. Your foundation's no good. The thing falls over at some point. It's no different to a race car driver. Yeah. You miss one of those steps and I, I, I was one of them. I thought, yeah, you don't need to do it. No, no, you do. Yeah. You need to do it. You need experience. You need experience, you know, starts. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Formula Ford's not easy to get off the line. No. Nah. You know, but it's – it's cost effective. You mm. can tear a corner off in a Formula Ford. Oh, I'll let the And that's, but that's okay. It <laughs> yeah. doesn't cost as – you go yeah. and tear a, 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 a supercar corner off, oh, that hurts. Yeah. <laughs> that hurts. Yeah. You know, and that's that's part of the thing in Trans Am. Yeah. Mate, we're at Winton testing. Ellie went – it started raining. Turn four it is now. Mm. started raining. They use the outside curb because you got to enter on the outside curb. Mm. Just the tiniest little bit on the painted line, bang, turn around into the fence. Yeah. Day over. Yeah. Crush right. the back of the car. Yeah. Okay. 20 something grand's damage, whatever it is. Yeah. Trans Am, Cody, same day, same exact thing. Mm. Boom. Yeah. Drove back the pits, put a bit of tape on. Yeah. Drove the rest of the day. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's scales of economy. So I look at it and go, yeah, okay, well, you know what? Let's say that I replaced the rear bar. It cost me 200 bucks mm. versus this. They get a year's – like they will still need to go that. But you go to Super 2, you're talking half a million dollars. That's just straightforward. Mm. Super 3, same sort of thing. You might you might drop 100 grand off it. Yeah. But in the end, you know – now the Super 2 cars look like they'll probably be quicker than the Gen 3 cars. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the, 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 the gap is going to be is interesting. But I'm not saying you can skip that step. But if you want a career in, in V8 supercars, mm. I believe that I'm going to go form the forward, teach you the fundamentals. 
then up the Trans Am because then you get a big car, moves around, etc. Does all that stuff. Same sort of thing. You don't have the braking power. You've got to, you've really got to sort all that stuff out and get your fundamentals, get your techniques correct. And at a national level, but not with the spotlight. Mm-hmm. The year after, if you're going to go there, instead of spending four to five years in Super 2, you spend two. If you're really good, you'll spend one. Mm. Yeah, you know, it, it's shortening that step because it, that phase because it, it's it's so expensive. Mm. It is so so expensive to get there, and you know, we've all we've all dream of it, mm. but how many people run out of money trying to get that opportunity? Like, there's there's there's. What, what do you think of Andre Morse, your customer, doing run doing the thing now that he's with Zane running? The privateer ranks look kind of like what John was doing in Super Two. He's 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 like a unique breed. He's kind of like uh, yeah, yeah. Andre's a very unique breed. Yeah. <laughs> um, Andre's a legend, and Zane is as well. Like yeah. he, he, I still give Zane some tips all the time, and and hey, Zane's Zane's ultra talented, but yeah. man, like he's done it the hard way, mm. and now he's going to get a good car. Yeah. You know, and Do I reckon he'll shine this year now because he's in the Mustang. Yeah, that kid's good. Yeah, he's good. As long as they get the cars, you know, in the in the operating area, and knowing the guys behind the scenes, they should. Yeah. He'll shine. Yeah. You know, you look at him. It rained at Bathurst there for a little bit. He was he was fast. He mm. was fast over the top. Like that's that's what saved Chaz Mostert's career. Yeah. People forget that he was driving. I think it was a Miles Racing. The thing was fluoro yellow. Mm. And he'd done half a season. He'd won the Formula Ford, yeah? Yeah. No doubt the kid was good, but didn't have the backing. Yeah. It rained at Bathurst and he went out there and it properly rained and he put two seconds on the field. Mm. I think it may have even been more. But oh, he who put, was running that team? I forgot. It that was for, Miles Racing, yeah, I think it was called. Yeah. But he, he put two seconds on everybody mm. in the first session. Yeah. Tim Edwards went and saw him after it. And in the second session, did even more. Mm. He was signed. Yeah, that there, and and, and I remember talking to. I'm, I'm pretty sure I spoke to Eddie or mm. someone close to the situation. That was his last round. Yeah. He, he was out of budget. That was done. Without that, that was there it. would be Chaz Mostert would not be racing. Yeah, you know. So it's about being in the right place, right time, performing. Kids exceptional. Mm. You know, top driver. It, it, it's the same with. Nick Perkat, you know, mm. Nick Perkat. Yeah, they had the budget to get to the Aussie race car, but he he shone in that that race and, mm. you know, Walkinshaw seen him at the right place. And it, it's just. Did he do Aussies before Formula Ford? No, nah, he did Formula Ford. Then he did Aussies. Then he went and then he got the sponsorship. Then they put him back yeah. in Formula Ford. So, oh, that's how it worked for him. Yeah. yeah so he, then he dominated of, in Formula Ford. After yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So he, he did it with Spectrum. I don't know if he did it by himself or not. Yeah. But. He sort of did it and was was uh, it wasn't slow, but it, it's always harder to being a privateer. Mm. Then went to the Aussie race car, and I don't know what race it was, but he did a stand up job. Yeah. Then Walkinshaw got behind him, backed him, put him in with um, Ritter, another guru. Yeah. Like just yeah, my ultimate. Ritter. Yeah. He's old school too. Yeah, yeah, another <laughs> old school dude. So yeah. you know, I really resonate with them. The um, school of hard knocks. You know, they yeah. don't they don't stuff around. If you're doing a shit job, you're doing a shit job. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, and, and and again, look at look at Nick now. You know, Nick's Nick's made it. Mm. He's done the job. Um, you know, and we all look at supercars, and we all want to be there. Mm. Or I always say to my drivers, "What do you want to be?" Yeah. Oh, who wants to race cars and get paid for it? Yeah. Yeah, me. Yeah. Okay, that's the first step. Not just a V eight supercar because yeah. twenty six. There's twenty six spots. Mm. That's it. You you count the amount of license holders in the country. You you, you do the sums. You do the percentage. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's very low percent that you're going to get that do you, opportunity. Do you reckon they should open the charters up to two more spots though, or not? Because there's there is a few guys wanting to come in. Oh, I'd love them to, but you know the because you've got insight into that because you were hanging in the pits. A few yeah, times and I'm still in the pits. Like yeah. I, I think it'd be that'd be brilliant, but it will. I, I don't believe it'll ever happen because. Mm. You know, that that then, um, you know, there, there's so many different reasons why, but monetary the and everything, yeah. they, the money the money is is filtered down. They've all spent, remember when they paid for their wrecks and, mm. and they paid millions mm. and some wrecks got taken off people. 
Uh, yeah. They had to hand them back in. And I understand both sides of it. Do I believe that there's room for bigger a bigger grid? A hundred percent, especially with you know the backing that's there. Mm. Um, these guys, but I also on the flip side understand why they don't want it there. You know, they they're the ones that have had to tough it through the tough times because it's expensive. Mm. I, I've heard though that the supercars are trying to expand their wildcard program to make the grid bigger. Do you know what I mean? Because there's yeah. so many guys obviously without a seat in sitting in Super 2 like Zach Best and a few others and obviously you think Declan Fraser is basically going to be announced for the Tickford drive. Yep. Do you know what I mean? But like a lot of those guys are yeah. obviously going to get seats in because now they're, do you know what I mean? Like they're trying to just expand it that one bit so some of the co-drivers get laps. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I think they're looking at ways and means. Um, I think because also there's less rounds though this year as well. There's less rounds, but I will believe when I see it, like that mm. means that there's got to be more Gen Three cars. Like it's gonna, it's yeah. it, it's gonna be a mean feat if these cars turn up the first test. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, because you'd have insight that because of Macca and the Jones. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be impressive. You know, like it, it's it's been a slow, long, slow process. Yeah. Um. Frustrating for the teams, all the teams. Mm. Um, do the demos cars get used for the season, or are they just no, nah, no? And they they still haven't signed off on it. There's still there's still wow. There, there's still a bit of um. Oh, the, the manufacturer being the manufacturers, they they both think they're getting a raw deal, so they're going to yeah. fight for it. So it, it's it's not all set in stone. Like they're still they're still fabricating parts. Mm. Uh, you know, pipes turned up the other day. Mac has said, "Oh, the pipes turned up." Mm. You know, so that's one set of pipes. Mm. Not for one. For one car, basically. That's it. Yeah. One side of pop. Jesus Christ. So it, it's, you know, you've got all these guys and they're, yeah. they're not working long hours because yeah. they don't have enough gear. Yeah. So they've, they've got all the gear and they can put the panels on the car right now. They could probably have nearly a complete car, but they've got one engine. Mm. So they're you reckon full. some of these teams will turn up to testing with one car, basically, and just do co-driving in a way? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. And then build the second car while they're still at testing. That's yep. Wow. Yep. That's how behind they are. Just, I think also that's due to the the COVID situation and the manufacturing because Brooks dad works works in trades and a lot of that stuff's just not coming through. Oh, there's no, there's no materials, raw yeah. materials. It's all got timber is one of the big ones. That's why so many of the construction companies are just buckling down in that. It's yep. just things are disappearing at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Like I, it's it was a big problem for me to get containers there for a bit. Like getting containers. Oh yeah, in. that's right. Yeah. Like yeah. the ports were full. I remember having an argument with one of the with the um, shipping company, and they they were blaming COVID. And I said, "Well, it hasn't slowed the ships down." Yeah. So explain to me why it's doubled in the length because it takes thirty two days to drive a ship across, and I'm paying extra to be direct. Yeah. I'd like to know why. What does COVID slow the water down? Yeah. <laughs> well, they were saying all those ships were. I remember they were all showing them. They were just. Thousands of ships just stuck out at sea, couldn't even get in. Yeah, just and it's just reasons. ports. Like, yeah. and that's what they probably should have said. It's just ports. Yeah, you know. But in the end, it, it's it's a headache. It, yeah. it, you know, it, it's still yeah, we're still paying for COVID. But I don't think in this instance it's all that. I think that it was all very last minute. Um, yeah. they've been changing designs. Not everything signed off. Like. You see all the Mustangs, they don't have rear wings. Yeah. They, they're they all just filtering down. And I'm not saying that the suppliers are working their asses off, mm. but they've got 26 parts to make. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a lot and in a short amount of time. So, hey, I, I hope everybody's there, but I, I don't believe they will be. Yeah. Back to the, your racing days, did you think for Cam's Rising Star was a good idea and it could be implemented in these days or not really? Yeah, 100%. So the last year when I went to Minda, mm. Um, after Spectrum, after being with Ballin, it was mm. great. Um, we, we sort of, I was, that was the option. So, um, it was Cam's Rising Star, me, LeBrock, Trent Harrison, me yep. and Trent are still great buddies. Um, Glenn Wood, you know, Glenn was, was one of the engineers and, and us three get along like a house on fire. We, we're still good buddies. Mm. At, at the time, I didn't really like Trent, um, mm. I didn't really like anybody, but now, yeah, it's, it's quite funny. <laughs> the um, yeah, yeah, I was a wanker. Um, but, yeah, like we, we get along. So it was great. It was a really cool initiative. Um, the year after, I, I I did the – essentially it was a done deal. Mm. Um, I did the whatever it was, evaluation day. Um, but 
yeah, Brad and I chose not to do another year of former forward. Mm. Um, do I look back at it? You know, probably could have, should have, would have. Um, but, you know, that was sort of when I was at the stage I didn't want to. But, but now I reckon it'd be awesome. Like, mm. you, you, Jeff was well involved in yeah. the whole thing. Like, it, it, it's it, it, there was Tom Warwick. There, was, there were others. And it was a great initiative. Um, I, I would love to think that it's not just, just sending kids to Europe. Mm. I would like, there's so many different pathways. Like we talk about motorsport in Australia and, and mm. you know, I've got kids that want to go to America and, and with Will Power, like Will and I talk probably every two weeks. Yeah. Um, and we, we've got plans, you know, to, to get kids to America and do it right. You know, there's so many different pathways over there mm. and it's confusing. If you actually sit down and look at the amount of pathways, yeah. F4, this, that, it's like, where do I go? NASCAR has drive to diversity, which Brooks seen on um, the Bubba Wallace thing. Yep. yep. But, you know, in his class, Bubba's class, there was six drivers and they all made it through to cup in the end. Do you yep. know what I mean? Like all, all different ways, but they still made it through. But that's the thing what Jeff, when he was doing Rising Star, he was getting enjoyment out of it because he was seeing kids with talent get through the ranks. Do you know what I mean? Like yourself. They got an opportunity that they would never actually ever got. Yeah. And that's the thing what's missing now because you as a top karting coach. Yeah. You're Where do you all- send them? That's, that's what I mean. You're sending them to WA, which is great because Brett's getting business, but do you know what I mean? But I've got kids there. Like I did said, I've got kids that are Australian champions and are absolutely amazing. Mm. Brad does an amazing thing and puts on at the end of every year a mm. supercar ride. Uh, uh, I can take five kids, six kids, seven kids, drive a supercar, Yeah, do 20 laps each. I take kids that just deserve it. Mm. We'll never, ever have the opportunity to go further. Yeah. Because there are some kids in my team that are the most loyal, hardworking people mm. and they deserve the opportunity. But I full well know that they're not going further because they don't have the funding. Mm. You know, I've got kids that I, I help in our team because they're good drivers and they deserve the opportunity. Mm. You know, that's – I want to win. Yeah. I'm a race team, but more than anything, I want to win. Yeah. I want to work with good people. It's a family to me and I want to win with them. So, mm. you know, it's not all about my – anybody close to you can tell you money. Money, I, I do not care about it. Yeah. Like people ask me, what? Well, yeah. Why, why would you do that? You're going to lose money. I don't care. Yeah. I worry about it later. Yeah. You know, it, it's about working – with top quality operators that just ha- share the same general interest, you know, mm. want to get away, enjoy their racing, do the absolute best. And, you know, we have a good time doing it. So I'd love for them to be able to have that because Ted said, like, they're, oh, I can tell you, I, I could tell you 20 kids mm. that deserve, and not just in my team, that deserve an opportunity. Mm. You know, um, Dave Sarah was one of them. Mm. And and won everything there was in carts. Yeah. Everything there was. Yeah. He's a coach now. Yeah. You know, like hey, he, he's kicking goals, doing a bloody good job. Mm. That cart class thing's pretty cool. That's like, it. He's, he's the actually, way he does it, he's, he's, pre- he's a bit really of a good. wizard too with social media. Oh, yeah, stuff. 100%. And he's yeah. done a great job. You know, he's he's gone in an area, niche market, and doing a great thing, you know. Mm. It's something I could never do. Mm. Um, But he's, he's doing a good thing. But... It's in, like, in your opinion, though, him being an 18 time Australian champion, why don't you reckon he made it past Formula Four? Was that just due to budget shortfall or just he just yeah, couldn't he didn't get, get enough? He, 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 he naturally good enough. He just yeah. didn't budget shortfall, mate. He didn't get, he, yeah, he got an opportunity, but he, he didn't test. Yeah. What, he had two test days? Yeah. You learn how to change gear. Yeah. And the two test days is enough, and that's just budget. Yeah. You give him a proper crack, he would have made it. Yeah. You know, you, you, even the, the Kelly reality TV show, mm. that was a cool thing. Yeah. You know, we don't see any of those opportunities. No. Um, well, Something like that should come back, by the way. Just because oh, there's, 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 the, there's not enough motorsport content. That's why we're, Brooke and I are getting a lot of. Oh, this cable. is awesome. Yeah. We're getting a lot of downloads and stuff now because there's just a missing market for. Oh. That's what we're seeing because a lot of it that's out there is just if it's it's run by which is great as well because you, mm. you want more content for everyone from listener in it, like they run a lot of it but it's at a certain style yeah. and that that's there like Toby Bill Bowen's doing such a great job yeah. in Speedway mm. yep. like he's created content that's you know different to ours because ours is long form story 
storytelling. Yep. He's on the ground, but he's also just, like I said to Dan, he teaches everyone in a way, speedway, that's totally digestible and entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. And he's formed a platform that's great too. But it was never there before. No, no. exactly. And Toby's yeah. a great kid, another one that grew up with us. He was yeah. a little bit younger, but he raced against Macca. Yeah. yeah. Just a sick dude. Like yeah. he, he, And he's done a great job. And I love, like when I see stuff, I always look at it. Yeah. You know, and from the shit card he drew, yeah, he's formed a way to still be involved in the sport and love it and teach others of, of you know, a sport that doesn't get enough media mm. coverage. Yeah. yeah. Like sprint cars does not get enough. Oh, yeah. I reckon they've done it again well in WA with that. I think he even mentioned it on his own post yeah. where sprint cars in WA is getting their own televised deal in channel, with Channel 7, I think. Yeah, yeah with Channel Mac- 7. They were yeah. with Chad Nail and all yeah, that were doing. Chad's yeah. well involved. Yeah. 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 See, <laughs> WA boy. I reckon, yeah. I reckon they've got to bring that back because sprint cars is awesome to watch in the summer and cricket gets all the coverage, right? Not everyone wants to watch cricket, no yeah. offence. For, for the motorsport fan, they should literally, by the live stream, have like a weekly oh, mate, slot it, for sprint cars. It's a no-brainer, you know. Like we're, now we've got a facility. I, I actually I can mm. confess I haven't been there, but now in Sydney we've apparently got a world-class facility. Mm. Yeah. We have seen no racing from there. Like no, nothing online, nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. When we're there, Dan and I, I'm looking around, I'm like, there's nothing here except for when Toby gets there, that's it. That's all you've got, his coverage. There's like, nothing. Yeah. I, I would have gone to a race, but in the end, uh, three kids, I'm never home. I probably mm. average through the year two nights a week at home. So I, uh, this yeah. period of year I try to spend there. And it's hard when I, well, I take Ollie, but I want to take Cooper, mm. who's four. But Coop hates motorsport. Yeah, right. So, so one of them hates motorsport. <laughs> I hate so I don't know. Yeah. He told me the other day when he's five, he's gonna drive a go-kart. Oh, yeah. um, so we know I laughed. Oh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And Ollie, Ollie was in Dubbo, just laps, laps, man. He did How old's how old's Ollie? He's seven. He's a yeah. nutcase. He just oh, lives, eats, and breathes it. And the baby's the same. The baby's gonna be the worst out of lot. So Hunter, <laughs> he's one. And you just see the eyes just oh, <laughs> he just he like today he used Spider Man mm. as a car. Because he threw the other cars away. It was brilliant. He's using Spider Man. Yeah. So I felt, yeah, how cool is that? Um, but yeah, like he, he he comes down in the shed because we've got a big factory in the backyard and he'll be in the go kart just going, Wah. so he, yeah, he's, but hopefully he'll, um, he's going to be too heavy. So we, we won't have to deal with him, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you, the kid, do you reckon Ollie's going to be the first one through to, being your t- is is he just are you go- are you taking it very serious with him though? Or are you, no, no, or are you kind of just taking it with him and just like he comes go- racing, so he'll race AKC this year. So mm. Australian Car Championship for the fact that it's not he has to come whenever I'm there, you yeah. know. So, but well, I, I, mate, I just want him to have fun, so I don't want any input. Like yeah. I'll tell him stuff, and he just looks at me and goes, "Yeah." He rolls his eyes at me, mm. and that's fine, you yeah. know. I, I want him to enjoy it, like. Does Cody mechanic for him when he's at the track? No, no. We get uh, Ellie or Elliot deal with him. Yeah, and I mean deal with him. They have to deal with him. <laughs> he's he's uh, he's like his dad, so he's got ADHD. He's a nutcase. Yeah. Um. And yeah, he, he's he's a crack up. Um. So yeah, so he's he started racing the middle last year. Yeah. Um. He yeah, man. He he, he makes me laugh. I, I probably watch. So over the week, I watched. Three sessions of yeah. his over the, over last uh, last week. So he was he was on track four days, and out of all of it, I watched three sessions. Mm. And normally, I walk off shaking my head, like it's just like there's an apex there, but you know we're near it. But yeah, I just want him to have fun. Yeah. I just honestly want him to enjoy it. And if he gets to twelve years old, and he's really wants to be good. Mm. Well then, I'll start to put a bit of effort in. But until now, like he he doesn't know. Well, wasn't what he Cody wants. a bit of a late bloomer too, though, when he was younger, or was he on? Uh, he um, was racing. I just don't think we sort of saw it so much. He he raced from seven. I think he was quite good. I I, I got involved with him when I got when I got involved with Zoe. So yeah. um, he went to the front pretty quick. Uh, Daz, bless him. He, he, he's old man. He's um he's not overly gifting cart setup. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it, it, yeah, once, once I started helping Cody was good straight away. Yeah. He, he, once we taught him to stop blowing the front tire off it, mm. like he's got something 
I haven't seen much of. Like there's him, Fife, you, you know, Zane, Morse. They I, all grew I, I'm up. I'm keen together. to go against him at Bathurst in my historic, by the way. Yeah. I'm keen to give him a run for well, that. Is your historic <laughs> fast enough though? Oh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I've <laughs> been on the Lupo saying we don't have enough horsepower for the last month. <laughs> that and I hope we both don't tear corners off the car. Oh, well, there's a high chance yeah. that we will. Um, yeah, he's able to find when the pressures and the chips are down. Mm. A big race like World Championship, he's able to find something. Yeah. It's actually frustrating mm. because you go test and you just don't see it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like bang. And it's like, well, why can't you bring that all the time? But I guess the gears, there's, there's people like that. Like you, you see from the gears, he's he's learned over the years to be able to bring it all the time. Mm. Um, uh, and so, yeah, like he, 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 he was a later bloomer. I don't know if Ollie's, um, I don't know how far we go. You might fall out of love with the sport. I don't know. But in the end, it's all dictated on. I just want him to do it if he wants to. I don't like the aspect that he'll always be expected to be good. Mm. I, I struggle with that. Yeah. Um, Because I just want him to be another kid, mm. you know. You just um, want him to have fun though. I just want him to have fun yeah. because he eats the best sport. Like all my friends come from karting. Mm. Um, I don't have a school friend. I, I have my, my – I don't have many friends, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I've basically, got a small group. I'm, I'm similar to you. Our karting group is basically who I know now yeah. all these years later. Yeah, I've got a small, close group. New, uh, group, yeah. And, um, you know, like it. But, man, they're, they're, they're lifelong friends mm. and you've, you've been through it. So I just want him to be able to have that. Like it's the best upbringing. Coming through karts, we go to the track. Mm. Dead set. I don't see him from once we start the day mm. till we go to sleep. Like we camp at the track a lot. Yep. And I'll yell out at nine o'clock, where are you, mate? <laughs> Find yeah. him running back. And it's like it's such a good community because mm. he'll either come in the morning, pull 50 bucks out of my wallet and then pull another 50 bucks out of my wallet, <laughs> shout everybody and, and, and everything <laughs> or – uh, the other uh, other parents, other people feed them. You yeah. know, they look after them. It's such a good, tight knit community like that. Keeps you on the straight and narrow. You know, teach your life life skills. Really good life. Do, skills. do you think the doing era was good for karting, or did you like it when we were doing? I'm also talking about the championship wise way. You know how we had the state championship. Everyone would turn up. That would be the race, and the Australian championship Easter. Everyone would turn up. It's very different. They're, they're just so different concepts. They're, they're mm. just very different now. Like the the sport through the doing area. Um, Do they get oversubscription? Yeah, we get fields? oversubscribed now. Yeah, um, big fields. Um, but it, it's it's just so different. It, it's so much more professionalism. Um, when we did it, it was, you know, I, I started the team back then, and and there, there's things that I feel have gone backwards and things that have definitely gone forward, you know, like um, the one thing I really struggle with mm. is the, the, the restrictions that are now put in. And, and I know they think it, it, it's for monetary reasons and to give everybody the same equal opportunity, but mm. I, I think it's crap. Mm. Um, I, I, you know, Roger Federer, um, Nadal, mm. everybody else, they got better through practice. Yeah. And they didn't say, oh no, you can't you can't train on clay for a month because you've got a clay tournament coming up. Yeah. You know? Oh, so they're restricting Well, testing. you're only allowed to test on your your certain tracks, you know. So we're New South Wales based. Yeah. And um, so we 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 can test on Newcastle yeah. for that round. You can't go to Todd Road. So if you're seven, yeah, you first time you race, unless you go to a club day. And and this is the problem. You go to a club day and you do, uh, what is it, three eight lap heats mm. and a final of of twelve. You know that's not many laps, but you spend all the money to drive there, mm. stay there because you don't just drive in one day to do forty laps. Yeah. It, 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 so you've got to test in your own state, really. To yeah. That's, r- that's that, ridiculous. I was about that's to say, how's that fair? Though. I was going to say when New South Wales is the state with like putting the go-karts tracks as inside kid, our actual a, tracks, as we've got too. one. Like yeah. we've got Eastern Creek. Yeah. So the, are they car, even, yeah. I was going to say, that do they even take that into consideration when you no, put other states that have got I, more? I understand a bit of it in, in, yeah, yeah, 100%. But like some, so Victoria had two rounds. 
Yeah. So that means they had two tracks. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Now, it, it is what it is. I get it and they're the rules that they've they've given us. But, you know, it's you go there and if you're able to then test at the tracks and, and hey, put your weeks out, put yeah. it a month out, put it whatever, you know. But if you can actually practice and that's how you get better, that's training. You know, yeah. Roger Federer trains to mm. get better. Like this is the this is the, the the nurture of motorsport. And yeah, unfortunately, some people can't afford that. Yeah, but that's that's the facts, and I get that. Okay, but the the cream always rises to the top. It hasn't changed. Mm. The same teams, the same people are at the top, but it's also made the sport more expensive mm. because people now spend the money to go to the shakedown meetings and do the fifty laps. Yeah. Over two days. Yeah. But instead before they'd go there and they do 200 laps a day, mm. Met, uh, bang for buck, you'd learn a lot more, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And now I, I just go on the data that I've had from previous years. Mm. That's that's not helpful for, for a guy that can't get that data. Yeah. You know, so that's that's probably something I feel is, is a little bit backwards. Yeah. Um, but they 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 are very very different um, errors, you know. Before we'd go into a, a state title, it was it was massive. You you yeah. know you won you run race nationals. I get why they went away from it. Uh, I I believe that AKC is a very good concept mm. in terms of, but it, it's very it's become commercialized in terms of you know it's more professional. It's um. It, it's it's followed by by everybody. That's what that, you race. It's pretty much the Australian Championships and CIK Stars Academy that merged together. Is Correct. That how basically it. it worked. Yep. Yeah, because I left I left at exactly that yep. point. Yep. Yeah. So they took over the CIK Stars of Champion uh, Karting. Yep. Yeah. And um, took out you know, KF1. in the meantime, in the meantime, it sort of took out the state titles. It took mm. all that stuff out. So now they're reintroducing the one-off state titles. Oh, they are? Yeah, yeah. yeah so, okay. so, like, we go to round one of the championships at the end of February at Monado. Mm. We drive from Monado straight back to Albury for the Victorian State Championships the very, very week after, so yeah. the weekend after. So that's a one-off. You know, mm. you've got your New South Wales State Championship. You've got your Vic, uh, Queensland State Championship. So they've still got them, mm. but everybody sort of – most people at, at, at the higher level focus – on the AKC, yeah, We're, you know, we grassroots is is still suffering, but I, I feel that grassroots will because you go and do your four or five, six, seven club days or a year of club day racing, and you're looking for your next step. Mm. New South Wales, we don't have it. Yeah. Um, we we've got issues in New South Wales, but hopefully they'll they'll be sorted. Victoria, you've got your country series and your Golden Power series, so a lot of them are able to go and do those series, and that's sort of an in between, and you know, immediate. Yeah. Uh, intermediate series, and then you go from that from a year and being at the front. Are, are they reviving AKC. Premier State Cup here, or is that? Uh, oh, that didn't take off the. No, nah, Carding New South Wales and Carding Australia, Australia New South Wales. Is, I've heard about their divorce court. <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, let's just not, yeah. not go there, but it, 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 it's just. It's hard work. Yeah, There's is not- that is that basically why the club levels have struggled though? Because of the whole hundred percent. That's you know, why. That's why it's struggled at the divide, low level. You know, there's different tires. There's different class structure. There, it's just it's crap. Yeah, it, it, it's so hard. So, AKC or Karting Australia based teams based in New South Wales are a disadvantage even more. So for us to test okay. at a track that's relevant, we're talking a. Uh, Five and a half hour drive. Yeah, right. So you have to go to certain. So let me let me work. This out. Oh, no, no. I so, so karting. I can go to Dubbo, mm. uh, a karting New South Wales track, no problem. Mm. But um, the 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 tracks that we race on aren't like a lot of those tracks. So mm. Dubbo is so, but that's still what it's a six hour drive for us. That's a that's a long drive. It's not easy. We've got New South uh, in New South Wales. We've got Newcastle uh, in karting. But as ca- cutting yourself, I've got different tires to cutting Australia. That's what that's what would shit me because that that means you're spending more. You're spending extra money that you don't need to spend if you, you almost need different chassis. Really? Almost, yeah. It, wow. It's very similar. Like if you got serious about it, you you would almost run. And it's just because the grip state. levels are so different. And it's just this state that's doing that. Basically, yeah, it's different tires, different engine regs. Like in Cadets, you can run a different. Um, that's ridiculous. Main bearing. Though. 
Yeah. So you've got to have two sets of it's 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 just hard. Yeah. Like and I can and, see why it's throwing at the bottom at the like the bottom bottom level because it's just it's there's as you said it's two different groups for one just for the state though. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. New South Wales is, is is hard work with that and, yeah. and it's just it's hard work. Yeah. So I can speak on it because I'm not involved in it. I think it's ridiculous because if if Brooke and I had a kid and we pushed the kid through, where do you go? We, yeah. yeah. My question as well is with all this complexity coming in and then the rising costs of it, are you seeing the fields get bigger or smaller in karting? At the top end they're getting bigger. Okay, yep. At the bottom end they're getting uh, – I don't think they're getting smaller. Uh, at the bottom end you see a at, – at grassroots you see them there and what they do is they, they get pretty good success straight away because – for like I, I take my kids to club days, but it's not the right thing to do because if I'm taking my team there, most of them are elite drivers. You go there and you wipe the floor and that's that's not what club racing is about. Club mm. racing is about learning the ropes. So yeah. they sort of learn the ropes and they get fast. And the problem is where, where in New South Wales or Victoria, where do you go next? What's the intermediate? Mm. Uh, and in New South Wales or Queensland, sorry, or South Australia, what's the intermediate? They mm. don't have it. So they go straight to national level. Yeah. And this is where I sort of have a little bit of a tug of war on, well, we've got these test restrictions because these guys can't go fast. Well, no, it's not the testing that's the reason. That's actually hurting them because they can't test at that track. So that's one. But two, the, it, we, we don't have the intermediate. And, the, and they're going from six months. Some get six months of racing. They go straight to AKC. I'm sorry. I don't care how good you are. You're going to get your ass handed to you. Yeah. yeah. You do that for six months and they're out of the sport. Yeah. That's because that's not good psychologically. It's just going nah. to go, what the hell for is everybody, the point of this? Too that's much, that's much pressure sport. on the kid, yeah. too much pressure on the dad, financial. You know, you go from spending this to this to this. The tyres now, it doesn't matter what you, you, tyre you've got, you know, you get a gain out of a new tyre. So most people, you turn up to a club you, day you know and new tyres. You know what's crazy? We're talking about talent that doesn't get seen. Those those guys could have burnt too quickly because there's no intermediate thing. Do you know 100%. what I mean? Like they so, could have been the next Lewis Hamilton for all we know or Daniel Ricciardo or something. They're gone. And they're gone within six months. They're gone. They get, the frust- they get frustrated. It's, they're, they're not competitive. They go from being competitive to, you know, not being competitive. So the, the, the high-end elite, like – the competition level in Australian karting is massive. Like mm-hmm. I could take the top, any of the top 10 and, and take them to Europe with a good team, yeah. with a good team, not with any team, with a good team where you know you're not going to get screwed and they will run top 10. Like Jace Matthews won, won the X30 uh, Australian Championship, mm-hmm. 1K3 Australian Championship, not last year, the year before. Went to OK Worlds, which is OK is – like that's where the best guys like McLaren drive and Mercedes drivers, all these new drivers are, are, are there. Yeah. He was purple. Yeah. He didn't right. qualify well, but he was quickest in three heats. Yeah. And this, that shows you the sort of level that we have. So we have a massive high competition level and that's across all boards. That's from cadets through to, through to KZ, you know? Mm. So that's a big jump. And I feel that, it's, it's nobody's fault, but mm. I just feel that we, if we could get some sort of series that, that is intermediate and be able to to push that forward, that would be um that would be cool because we need we need people to stay in the sport, mm. you know. Um, and the, the the sport itself, the startup costs are enough, yeah, <laughs> to start yeah. with, <laughs> and then you know. It's it's so difficult, and and the rising costs of life, you yeah. know, living is higher. So it's um, yeah, it, it, it's it's a tough thing. That um, shows though why you were saying why club level is so down because the startup costs and then the intermediate thing, all that little part there is why they jump to AKC because they don't know where to go in between. Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, it's maybe, confusing. maybe they should create like a Premier State Cup in a way for each state to keep that bubble there. and They've got to create some sort of championship. Victoria's got it down packed. Like what's, what's their championship? Well, there? they've got a country series and a golden power series. They've got two. Oh, so that's still going. Yeah, yeah, it's still going and it's still thriving. Like they yeah. get massive entries. So, but that's a culture thing. Mm. You know, that, that's been there for years. Yeah. And, and and it's hard. Like New South Wales is just a basket case mm. um, to be able to restart that. Like that. that's essentially... Once it all becomes one again, if it ever does, but once it all becomes one, yeah. I feel that that's it. I think 
Queensland are starting to get that sort of thing. South Australia is starting to get it. And if you can get a bit of momentum with that, you know, then I could take my my first year drivers to that, mm. you know, and, and introduce them because now you get drivers that do a year of apprenticeship. Mm. You've come on, dude, you, you're not going to be at the front, but you got to learn. Yeah. You know, and that takes a, a fair bit of mental discipline to be able to go, okay, I'm going to go along and spend a bit of money here, but it's part of it. Yeah. That's, that's difficult. Yeah. You know, but the guys that do second year, bang, they're on the money. Yeah. You know, but it, it's, um, yeah, it, that, that's probably the frustrating thing in the differences. Um, Formula Ford has that, by the way, you'll notice at Bathurst is you know, HFFA, which is historic Formula Ford Association and FFA, which is Formula Ford, which I you can't raced. wait. But the thing is, the difference <laughs> thing is, is HFFA is their own group. Yeah. And then you got Formula Ford Australia, which is their own group. But the thing is, again, it's kind of like KA, K New South Wales and yep. KA. They hate they're, each other. Yeah, they hate each other. But you've got to think of it from an outsider's point of view, like myself. 50 cars. Of, yeah, exactly. But also there's different rules. So like you go to historic Formula Ford in Formula Ford Australia Association, and it's different rules to the one that we, that, so that Wally cost, story. Cost, uh, that, that's a costing curve. Yeah, that cost me three steering wheels because I, <laughs> I had the shits. Do you know what I mean? Because I had to fit the, to the certain regs. But then I can go to a cutting, I can go to Formula Ford Association and have a different rule set. Do you know what I mean? It's just too hard. It's just, it's, it's insane. And you it, walk away from it. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to walk away no, from it. No, I know, but that's but, your yeah. love. But a lot of people will. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people go, you know what? I don't need this crap. I just yeah. want to do it because it's fun. Yeah. I see, yeah, I do see that in even the Formula Ford club because I, I was on the committee for a bit in Cameron Hill as well. You see a lot of guys just come in after two years and they're like, this is just too confusing and too 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 much money spent. Yeah, you know 100%. What I mean? Yeah. 100%. you got to be a diehard and something wrong with you stay in it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why true. I'm still in it. You're yeah. still in it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why Brooke's like, oh, my God, just. <laughs> <laughs> and then we started this show. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so we could complain it about it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Brooke, Brooke at the start was like, oh, I don't know about car racing. And tell you what, she, oh, actually, I'll tell you a funny story, right? So yeah. we're talking about historic Formula Ford. She comes to the state meetings and she's like, support. she's like, fuck, I just hope you just win that state championship so you stop talking about it. I did that, right? <laughs> I He's won wanted it. this for like 10 years. Yeah. I've known him for two, so over two now. That's but that, but yeah. all I've heard. And I was just yeah. like, but you know what? Also, when Pete, someone just really wants it, I was like, yeah, Dan needs to, you need to win this. You need to get this off. Like, yeah. you know, just win it. Yeah. yeah. And so she's never seen an historic Formula Ford race until the end of last year, right? Yep. She goes there and she's like, this racing is sick. Where's this been? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Phillip just, Island? Yeah, Phillip. Oh, she's come to that too. Uh, yeah, like, I'll be oh, there yeah. in that one this yeah. year. But yeah. it's just like the old school racing, a bit like karting. Do you know what I mean? Karting, which is why I love it. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. Bart and I have a go-kart that we take to Picton every now and then. I see, Bart, I see Bart's kart. Yeah. It needs I, a bit of work. It does. <laughs> <laughs> I tell him to get in. I basically hand him my cart now. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, that's him. But the thing is, karting and Formula Ford, what all you've said about this whole podcast is it's raw racing and that's why people- It's real get, racing. Yeah. They, they just, they come to it's it. It's emotion. But, yeah. It, it, it shows your real raw emotion. It's not everybody, and I don't care what anyone's, everybody has a chance. Mm. You get, we've all got good gear, mm. but you get that, everybody's got an opportunity. You don't have to have that special engineer like Formula One. I don't know how some of the guys do it. Mm. You turn up, you know you're going to be fighting for last. Mm. Hats off to you. Yeah. Like, man, I couldn't do it. Yeah. It, 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 it's it's like, but, and that's where Will and I have the, the conversation, you know. IndyCar, yeah. you could one week be fighting for, you know, 20th, the mm. next week you can win. Mm. It, it, it's it's a level playing field and and karting does that you know it brings it brings the very best out of people and the very worst. I, I love by the way talking about IndyCar and Will Power himself. I love IndyCar racing because that's all the one same yeah. chassis. Oh, sick! It's sick. It, yeah. it needs more coverage. Brooke was saying like obviously Scott McLaughlin won the Supercar Championship, yep. but Will went over there straight away basically. Yeah. Well, to he Euro went to Europe and yeah. he, he's a big advocate for Europe. Um, he cut his teeth. Pretty much was on the bones of his ass. Him, Will Davison, good mm. mates. Um, and, you know, Will come back, unfortunately, and Will stuck at it, got an opportunity, and look, you know, now two-time IndyCar champion. What was the team that he was with before Penske? I can't remember. Uh, it was it was called Team Australia. I don't actually know oh, what yeah. it was. Uh, I don't actually know. It was Team Australia and then – With WPS, that Yeah, he yeah. only got an opportunity because – Castro Nevis 
got done for fraud mm. and wasn't allowed. It. I maybe may have gone to jail. I don't know. Yep, sounds and, like racing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't entirely. Know. We only yeah. laughed about in Vegas when yeah. I was in Vegas earlier in the year. We had dinner one night, and I asked him, and he's like, "Oh man," because I was lucky because I sort of. He turned. He wanted to go the Indy Cart Road, not the Cart Road, when they split. Yeah. So he went that road, but he ended up going the Cart Road, and then Cart fell over, and then there was no drive, and then all of a sudden Cash Nevis got done for fraud, yeah, or tax, I don't know something, and then he got an opportunity, and it was always like, okay, we're going to give you a test. When did a test it was really good, so they're like, okay, well, you're going to get a drive, but if he comes back at any point, you're out. Yeah. And I'm like, how did you sign that? <laughs> well, it was the best team. <laughs> so then he signed, yeah. won races, and it was like, then Cash and Evis is coming back anyway, yeah. and then they made an extra car. Yeah, and it's right. funny how things work. So he's been there and he's part of that family, and and now now Scott's there, and he's like, Scott is good. And I'm like, yeah, he's good. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they've got, they've got a cool team, but it, it, it's just like, his understanding of it and and how he talks about it, a guy that's that's as old as he is now, and the passion he has for the sport and how hard he works. Like those boys have carts at the GoPro Motorplex, which Justin Marks owns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he always goes there. So yeah. Justin Marks and Eric Jones are, are um are business partners in it, and they own yeah. that track and they own Miami, but they've all got garages and mm. they keep their carts there. So Penske's the just down the road. Ever. I think it's the set. sickest thing ever. Oh, anyway. it's sick. You go there during the week and they're there. Like like Will was there. He would have been there this week. He was there last week. He called me and he was mm. asking me about something on the go-kart. And I said, well, just put it back to standard. Stop yeah. stuffing with it. Because he loves playing with things, man. Yeah. And, but um, <laughs> he, he, he like they all go there all the time. Him, New Garden, uh, McLaughlin, uh What's the uh, Kyle Larson? He's oh, got yeah. a go kart, but yeah. man, he he's doing something every day. He's doing he's on <laughs> he's, he's doing speedway every stuff every day. <laughs> but like they've all got go karts, they all rock up at different times. Um, but Penske's dead set. You drive out the gates, you drive two hundred meters, you turn left. Penske's there. You know they're all around that area. I've been to that track and mm. it is amazing. Mm. Like the facility, everything. North Carolina. I went there in 2010 to visit the NASCAR teams and stuff. I went on the NASCAR yeah. tour years ago. Yeah. I, North Carolina is awesome. I'd live I there. Like, yeah, same here. I, I come back and I said to Zoe, <laughs> "That's one I, place I, in America I'd live." I would move this podcast to there. Hundred <laughs> percent. The lakes, everything. It just, yeah. it's just got that vibe. And when you're around NASCAR, like I don't know, like uh, that would be the ultimate dream. Yeah. Um, you know, I tried to get Ollie to race motocross so that he could be like Jet mm. Lawrence and Hunter Lawrence. And yeah. me and Macaulay wanted to go and just be his groupie yeah. as he made it. And yeah. Macaulay goes, why are you so sure? He's like, oh, I'm going to make sure he makes it. <laughs> oh, I'm going to make sure. Like on a bike, he's yeah. he's seriously good. Like on a motocro- motocross bike, Ollie's just – do you know? Do you know much about the motocross thing? Because I'm still learning about it as I go. Yeah, yeah. Because dad, dad knows everybody yeah. from it all. Is it, is it like the karting scene in a way? Like, is it? Is it? Yeah, it's got more like. So it. has it got? Cl- has it got club days? Then yeah. state, national. Yeah, international. yeah. So it's got club days and it's got state and then it's got a national series. Yeah. And then you step from national to international is quite hard. Yeah. Um, but it seems like from like Macaulay's cousin, mm-hmm. he's a top rider. Well, not yeah. He's good. He races national scene. Yep. Um, so Macaulay Jones's cousin races in. Yeah, yeah Macaulay in, goes in Mo- and works with him at, no, at the well, round. Yeah, Jobin, Jobin Baldwin. So he yeah, runs right. like top. He runs top eight, mm. and he's a privateer. Yeah, right. And Macaulay gets frustrated with him because it's like, man, you don't change anything <laughs> on the bike. You, you should change your shock. You should, oh yeah. yeah, but standard's good. We well, can always go back to standard. And it's quite funny. Like they're they're probably a little bit agricultural backwards in that way. Yeah. Um, but you know the top teams aren't like CDR. Craig Dak Racing is just next level. Your Reeves, Honda, Honda yeah. team, like it's in America. But we've we've had the discussion of you look at the options, you can go to Europe or you can go to America. And and I think the old school, it, it's sort of like carts and cars, yeah. you know. The Europe way is old-fashioned hard. You, you, you work your ass off to try and make it. 
and then you can go back to America and the money's in America. And I think the top breed, but they don't breed them as well. The amateurs isn't as good as Europe where, um, yeah, there, there, there's two different options. But the money in America is just just yeah. ridiculous. Last question before we wrap up this podcast. How about we, we were talking about guys who we grew up with like Ricardo, Limbom, all those kind of guys. But how good's Brian Sanderson come through? Oh, man. Like – Pretty basically helped create supercars in that awesome era yep. with Tony Cochran, and yep. then created the supercross era. What he's doing now, like everything he touches, legit. I'm actually going to have him on the podcast soon. Turns to fucking gold. Media, he's just like he. he <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure he started that inside supercar stuff. He, yeah, he, I, I remember in the early days when he was there because we were sort of both there at the same stage in the early days, and he was on the media side and and, and that and mm. um, really nice guy, like just gentleman guy. Yeah. Um, but everything he gets into, like he, he just, it comes out. The production's great, you know, gets in with Tony Cochran. Yeah. Um, and he, he's now got the supercross thing and, and to the point, I, I love it. He's got their attention. Like the AMA, yeah. the Americans are just like, yeah, whatever. They don't care. They, they, nothing ever phase them. Yeah. Well, they've started a rival thing against them. So obviously that's got up their nose. Yeah. Big balls. Like yeah. a Ryan must have a big set of balls to be able to go, yeah, this is what we're doing and, you yeah. know, we're going to do a world supercross and this is how we're doing it and blah, blah, and just laid it out. That's the thing that was just great what he's done though, that AMA has actually realised because AMA, if, it, if they did take it on a world tour, that would sell out anyway, but he's just gone, you're not going to take it around the world, so I will. No, now he's I mean? forcing them to, to sort of, they're, they're, they're calling something a world super. I don't know yeah. what it is, but – you know, they're banning their dry riders from doing it. Yeah. They're trying to, you know. That's what Wood of Outlaws. Yeah, I was about to say. Wood of Outlaws have just done that, by the way, for the Aussies coming here, all the Americans coming to Australia to race. So Brad Sweet, um, Sheldon, Helch, Sheldon Horton Child, Aaron Rizel, they've all had a, a blocked visa. Yeah, so none of them are going to come out to the like all the Warner Bulls Sydney base, they were supposed to be at. They're yeah. all so why did their visa get blocked? Because of World of Outlaws, apparently one of them on the inside, this is what I think, has said – no, you can't because you've got to get some something to do with payment. Or There's a lot of words we've heard out. from other drivers. They said yeah. when you go over there, they don't like those guys competing outside. And then someone just posted that they fought tooth yeah, and Mick nail Seller. and they did everything with Toyota. Everyone here did all the visas, right, everything, right down to the point. They said someone has said something on their side and basically do was like made well, something, said something yeah. to immigration it and it's gotten cancelled. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And it's the same sort of setup. I said to Dan, oh, we heard from others they were making it hard and they said if they're coming over here and winning money, what they say, because mm. that's what the excuse was, that they yeah, were on travel money. videos and making yep. money, but they said – they weren't going to make the money because we're paying for everything. That was the barter system or whatever they were doing. Mm. And so they said there was no reason yeah, to block the visa. Someone's definitely tipped them yeah. off. Yeah, and I think that's what's going to happen with obviously Ryan's crew and then AMA. They're going to try and – Oh, look at what they did with Roxon. Yeah. You know, like Honda were told don't let him ride. Mm. So he then got told. He went, yeah, well, I'm out. See yeah. ya. And yeah. how good's that? Like, see, ya, he's he's gone and <laughs> lived the life for what, yeah. three months. Test rode everything. Gone back to Suzuki. Who don't really manufacture. Well, they manufacture bike, but I have nothing to do with it just because he can. Yeah, good on you. Yeah, you know, like, but that's AMA going no. So they're trying to you know stand over the top and be Godfather, but. Mm. Hey, you, 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 it, the the manufacturers are going to get on board, mm. and there's room for two. I don't under there, yeah. there's no reason for it. So, you know, uh, Ryan's done a, a ripping job in every part he's gone and done, mm. and um, yeah, I, I'm excited every time you, you see him. At, I saw him at Adelaide, mm. and um, yeah, like he. he, he when he's around, you know something's about to happen. I, I honestly didn't think he was going to respond to a DM from me about coming on the podcast, yeah. and he was like, "Fuck yeah, man! I want to come on this podcast." <laughs> yeah, he, like you know what I mean? Like he's so he's like passionate, like yourself. I was oh, like, he loves I was, the sport. I was like, dude, are you gonna? He's like, yeah, I'll come on. Well, he raced the enduro at yeah. the end of the year. Like oh, him he? and his brother, yeah, him and his brother raced the enduro. It's just. Yeah. Just a, a, a That's a cool little team. event too. Yeah, it is a cool event. Yeah. It's a lot of fun, put together by um, you know, carters that love yeah. karting. Yeah, that's put together by – is that put together by Dave Sarah? Sarah yeah. um, uh, Jace Lindstrom and Lee Nicolau. That was cool, by the way, for Oscar Piastri to come back and teach those kids karting for a bit. Or yeah, it's good James that Oscar did. comes and, and still gets the track. Like, uh, you know, every time I've seen Oscar, when he's back, mm. it's not many, but he's just 
down to earth. Did you reckon he had it back when you were watching him car or you couldn't really see because he kind of just went to the – He's to- good. Mm. Did I think he'd do what he did? Honestly, no. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he, he's far out. Yeah. He kicked some goals, yeah. Do you reckon, he went do, out and, do you reckon he'll prove doubters this year in yeah, your opinion? Yeah, yeah. He, he proved he – proved what he had to prove straight. Yeah. Like I think he's, his F2 year was like no, yeah. no one can really doubt after his F2 year. Like F3, yeah, yeah but possibly, but F2. Like how yeah. could you doubt that? Like that He was, flogged them though in his rookie year. And that's and when I, the pressure was off. Like those last couple of rounds were just fucking unbelievable. Like yeah. he, he just – he he's – hey, he's up against Lando and Lando obviously has that team well, well mm. oiled around him. Like there's yeah. no doubt that that team pulls for Lando. Mm. Um, but I, I feel that I know exactly what I think he's going to try and do, and Mark's going to be in his ear about it. You Mark's just got to basically, he basically got to drive like Lando to beat Lando because that's what they. Oh. That, Mark, oh. Mark had the team. Yeah, I remember Red Bull. Yeah, built around him. Yeah, he. Yeah, I don't think Daniel, knowing Daniel the little bit, I know about Daniel, and and from that, I don't think that he's he would have put as much emphasis on building the team around you. Mm. Mark will definitely make sure that that Oscar does everything he can to build the same support unit around you yeah. as Lando's got, you know, and um, he, he's he'll do whatever he has to. He's young. Mm. He's not, he doesn't have preconceived ideas. Yeah. You know, and, and Lando come over – it come out the other day. I read, Was it last night? I read that he doesn't like the new car and the way that he has to drive it. Mm. You know, well, that's fine. Lando said that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, you know – I don't think – There was another one, I think it was George or whatever, saying that the cars, which it, it makes sense, those new cars, they're too heavy or something. They're complaining that it's like it's very – obviously it, it was – Physically heavy in yeah, terms like of they were just it? they just won't – they're not lo- like light and dynamic like the 2020 uh, cars. Do you know they, what I mean? They wouldn't be. You know, ground effects does that. Yeah. You know, if they want to know what heavy is, go and, go and watch an Indy car on board. Those things just look like hell to steer. Yeah. Like they, they're twitchy, man. Those guys – I've spoke to – Will about it. I'm like, are they hard to drive? Like, I just look at their hands. And man, their hands are going at a rate of knots. Yeah. You know, yeah, they're physical. Yeah, you just they, get, they're oh, like, mate. They're, and they're heavy. Like, it just pulls it out of their hands. Like, whoa. Yeah. And it's like, man, like that, that's violent. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was something I'd never ever be able to feel. Yeah. <laughs> the the most scariest feeling for me, even even after all the stuff I've done all these years, is still hopping into a Rotax and just being like, because I'm so I when, when I do the car stuff and go back to a car, I'm like, fuck me, I'm like you, I get oh, back I and I'm like, fast. And you're like fuck, they're quick and you you run out of energy real fast, real fast, and yeah. it all happens so quick. You yeah. know, it's like whoa, 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 like that's why I still make the guys go into cars, do cars, yeah, because you jump into a car and essentially it's easy. Mm. Because you've got ten yeah. seconds each straight. Yeah. In a go kart, you got yeah, not what half a second some straight. So wow, when you're yeah. in your corner, you know. So it, it's all happening so quick. And if you can have your process down, yeah, and speed it up on high speed. Like I, I have watched. Who do I watch on board with? I watch on board with somebody mm. who was in cars. I, I don't remember. And they're like, "Is that is that in fast forward?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> they're like, "No, no, it has to be fast forward." And I'm like, no, mate. No. That's yeah. real speed. Yeah. You know, and it, it's just bang, bang, bang. And that's what that's what Fernando says. Like yeah. Fernando just loves karting, loves it for that reason, gets in a go-kart all the time because mm-hmm. he just says, oh, there's nothing that keeps you sharper. Yeah. And then you see him just doing donuts and it's like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how many It was, it was pretty cool, by the way, to watch over the COVID break where Lando Norris brought out his own cart and that thing sold out like hotcakes yeah, too, 100%. like Cart Republic. Like yeah. I was that, I was impressed by that. I was like, holy he's shit. He's got a big following. Yeah. He's um, he's well liked. Are they OTK or are they? Yeah, they're OTK. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they're probably the big, most popular OTK. Yeah, right. So we're, we're – uh, do they have limited runs though of carts like that you have, like the willpower or do they just do – they, do, do they freight – you know, the three lots of chassis to you. Well, there's the all different. Time. No, no. So whatever my order is, mm. they, they freight the, the quantity that I need. Yeah. I don't know how OTK work, but there's three different, I think there's three different distributors of OTK carts in Australia. So it depends on what they all order mm. um, uh, and their availability, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Like it's just, it, it all depends on, on the group you're working with. Yeah. So yeah, he, that that side of things. But yeah, he they've done a good job with it. They've marketed well. The cart looks good, goes all right. Mm. Um, you know, all those things are, are are pretty cool. Having those people input, like I, I, I've 
we're in the final stage of putting together a thing with Fernando and his group mm. that the week before the Grand Prix, mm. we're going to put on a thing where Fernando comes to track with all the Fernando Alonso drivers. So I'll invite all the guys awesome. that have got them and then they get to meet him, do laps with him. You know, he'll do a day. And um, yeah, that'll be. That, you, you had that's Pierre cool. Gasly on your website. Yeah, Pierre, Pierre drive cart. Yeah, Pierre's yeah. An absolute legend. <laughs> yeah, cool dude. Um, he, he'll probably. Yeah, he, I, I would suggest he'll he'll pop in because he loves it. Yeah. Um, you know, Will will do the same. Will yeah. was back, uh, but he was when he come back, he had broken ribs. When yeah, no I heard about, about it. it. Yeah. So I, mean, I, I knew about it the day after, and he's yeah. like, "You can't tell anybody." And he sent me the vision. I'm like, "Oh man!" He goes, "Oh, it was the other kid's fault." I'm like, "No, it wasn't." <laughs> 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 and um yeah. and yeah anyway so he come back and he was gonna race yeah so we had a racing a vortex race in um oakley yeah everything well, was, tied was up. gonna race yeah we was gonna race everything was tied up oh. and he's like oh, i broke my ribs and i'm like and then he gets here and he's like oh i think i can drive and i'm like no 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 i'm not having roger Bensky call me yeah. and say you punched my driver's lung <laughs> because you made him race and he's like oh you reckon i'm like yeah i do <laughs> so um I, I would suggest that he'll race yeah 100 when he comes back um but he, he'll do the same like he, he he struggles to come back as much yeah um but yeah like that's the, the does he come a lot back. back? Does he come back much or not really? First time in two years was at the end of this year. Oh, oh wow. three years. I raced his dad, by the way, in Formula Ford for a year. Did you? Yeah. Apparently, apparently he's got an absolute banging Kent engine. He does. It was fucking hard to beat, by the way. I, I beat him. I should have borrowed that for Bathurst. <laughs> you should, actually, you know what? <laughs> it's late and too late. <laughs> well, you, can do it, you can do it. No, no, Brett, swap. no. Lupton's assured me I've got good horsepower. Okay. okay. I said it needs to blow people's stickers off going up the hill. All right. oh. He goes, well, you worry about getting the drivers right and I'll worry about the engine. I'll talk some smack to Lupo there. And be, oh, if, please, <laughs> straight away. If he, Tommy's drivers don't do well, you should have got Will Powell's old man's car. <laughs> I'll tell him. <laughs> but it is a banging car and it took me – Fuck, Bob can actually drive for his age. Yeah. Well, obviously with that motor would help, but fuck me, dead. He made it hard to pass. Oh, uh, that's too funny. That's yeah. And Richard Davison as well. He has a oh, good old crack. Yeah, Richard's quick too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah far out. He's even harder to beat. <laughs> I, re I remember him, oh, what was it, before COVID, I came fourth in that race and he was just ahead of me. Yeah. And he came together with some guy in the Netherlands, a, a guy from Holland, and they were racing just ahead of him and he purposely chopped him and then a part of his nose cone came and nearly hit me in the head. And I was like, and I was like, mate, are you trying to fucking like <laughs> hurt me to not race? So I was like, oh, uh, mate, those old guys have a crack butt. Uh, You'll see it at Bathurst in Fort uh, Collins. You know what? It'll be good fun. Yeah. I love yeah, the banter that's... between you guys. They always come in and like, you're like, oh, you yeah. young ones, Wally, don't know what the hell Wally's, you're doing. Wally's the, the bank for banter. I he, didn't he, know yeah. Wally was getting, so Wally will be there. Wally will be there for Bathurst. Oh, Bathes. no. Yeah. He'll be checking your car. He'll be oh, checking your car. He's going to be hammering there. me. Oh, yeah. He'll yep. be, what is he, a tech guy? He's the tech guy. He's the one that harassed Dan. Dan with yeah. his steering wheel <laughs> and Dan had a massive tantrum and they were next to him and he said, I don't give a shit, fix that yeah. thing. Do you know the reason he was trying to do it? This isn't my assumption. He can hear this on the podcast. Yeah. He was, he's basically trying to head fuck me so I wouldn't beat Bruce. <laughs> 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 so by the time it got to the last race, which Bruce won, I was in fourth. So I couldn't win anyway at that point. Uh, that's too, well, uh, Wally, Wally will know not to come to me because I'll just go, I don't care. Yeah. It's not my problem. Uh, you just be like, who gives a fuck? Yeah, you're there for a race mini anyway with your boys for one meeting. Just, but I don't care. Who cares? <laughs> no, nah, he'll be giving it to me. I've got yeah. no doubt. Wally is a... Uh, He's very funny. He's a good man. Yeah. Well, Tom, we've basically come to the end of the podcast and I've got the show. I don't know if you've heard it before. The Fast Five. Have you heard of it? No. So the Fast Five. Here we is, go. This will be good. It's fire, It's not a firing question, so you don't have to fire them off. It's a, We can talk about these questions as well. But it's basically five questions and Brooke, leads the, Brooke holds the leaderboard, don't you, in the podcast? I don't have the full leaderboard yet. We need to pull that together. We need to go back over this last season. Yeah. We, this is season three for yep. anyone listening. We had season two. I think the best was so far was Cam Hill, five Cameron out of five. Hill. And then behind is Tom Sargent. So Tom Sargent's number two. We don't have the rest of the leaderboard. He was four and a half. He did quite well. Yeah. They've been in the same time. But to get a good prize, uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the inside information. Yeah. That's not fair. So, to get a good prize, Tom, you basically need to get, was it three or four? We said three out of five. That's what we've been consistent on. Okay. Um, and if it's if you get a bad prize, well, it's whatever Dan finds behind his desk, I'll basically. Be a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you'll either get a bogey prize or a really decent prize. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah. we keep the questions within everyone's realm of where you work and what yeah. categories you're in.
Yeah. So this is the fast five. The number one question, and the, it'll go between Brooke and myself here, is obviously me because I'm a go-kart. I'll say this question. When was go-kart racing founded? Oh, I've got no idea. No idea? You want to have a stab at it? What year? Uh, 1920. No, 1956. Do you want yeah. to know the bio on what, how it started? Yeah. Okay. All right. This can be for, for your go-kart listeners yeah, out I'll there. Yeah, I'll be using this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can listen to this the next test day while you're bored. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> in the beginning, the first ever go-kart was created in Los Angeles, California. In 1956, the first official organised race took place with several dozen home-built machines in 1957. So it was founded in 1956 then raced in 1957 in a parking lot at the famed Rose Bowl, Pasadena, California, where they play the, obviously yeah. the college football. Yeah. So that's where it was founded and it was obviously kind of like the, the Las Vegas race now. I guess that's the new version of it um, in obviously a parking lot. That's, yeah. that's the first thing. Was it by Lake Speed? Uh, I didn't get the I didn't get the probably was Lake Speed. He was an awesome go karter. Yeah. He was he yeah. was the echelon. The legend. I rate him over Senna in go karts. Yeah, <laughs> he was an awesome NASCAR driver in the end. Yeah. Um, I'll do this one, and then Brooke can do number three. How many karting Australian championships has Dave Sierra won? Oh, Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Well, there you go. I was going to say it was one. It was a multiple. It was a multiple choice one. It was 16, <laughs> 17, 18, or nineteen. 18. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Brooke, you got number three. Okay, how many Australian championships has Brad Jones won? It's a multiple choice. It's five, seven, or nine. Well, that includes Oscar, doesn't it? It includes Oscar. Oh, yes, correct. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, this is going to, this is, I hope Brad listens to this one because Mac is going to come on the show. Seven? Too. No, it was nine. Nine? Yes. He must have got lucky. Do you know how many Oscar championships he won? It would be seven. It, it, you walk into five. you walk into BJR oh, and the whole things yeah. are all these Oscar trophies. He was a gun in NASCAR and Oscar though. Yeah. He ruled the Thunderdome with Kim. Yeah, that was sick. I've been watching old tapes. That's why I always say to him, "You can only turn left." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, "Well, I went right." <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, <clears throat> number four. I'll I'll say this one, and then Brooke can take number five. Which former kart racer turned into a tele- t- reality TV star recently? It's not a multiple choice. Oh, no, exactly who that is. <laughs> what did you do? Reality TV reality star. Reality TV star. I don't know if it's a reality TV star. Yeah. But um, that would be Renee Gracie's mind. My, my oh, <laughs> okay. <It> was <laughs> social media star. <stuff. laughs> <laughs> or P-star, as we'll say. If this ends up on YouTube, I'll just go P-star. <laughs> no, well, there was her. Um, obviously, she raced supercars, but got kart racer. that she. I would have said car racer for her. Kart racer is Ryan Gallagher. Yes. You feel As like, an I was going, a fair way. Yeah. So I was actually going to say, I was hoping you'd say that. I know but, Ryan quite well. well. There you go. Well, you said you said the P-star, but. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Gallagher, he's done well. He's on maths and he's dating. Yeah, yeah. Ryan, Ryan and I grew up. So we we grew up racing at Goulburn yeah. Kart Club together with his brother. So I knew Ryan quite well. And man, hasn't he, um, he's he kicked ex- some goals now. Oh, yeah. he's he's far, He's got so many Instagram followers. Yeah, well, we need to get him on here. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I reckon he would. Do you reckon he'd come yeah, on here? Yeah, yeah oh, I reckon he would. I hope he is this. I reckon yeah. he would. <laughs> he's a larrikin, though. Oh, he's funny. Yeah. He's always been very, very funny. Yeah, yeah. So Ryan Gallagher, anyway, unfortunately, Renee Gracie is off the list. <laughs> well, I reckon I should get two points for that. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, what's the what's the tally count so far? Uh, one. One. <laughs> one out of four. Has he got one out of four? Yeah. Oh, no. Well, let's get, well, let's see if you, you, okay. should, you, I reckon you should get this for, you know, a little bit of a saving grace here. So we've got number five, who won the very last sprint car race at Parramatta Speedway? Literally before it shut down. Was it Jamie Veal? No. Oh, no. He that was that was an easy one, wasn't it? <laughs> no, kind oh, of an easy one. no, it was one of the dumbs. Yeah, it I was, was going to say, we'll just think of the family <laughs> it that was owns one of the Speedway. Do you know who, which dumbsy while we're uh, here? Well, it wasn't Mitchell. It wasn't Max. <laughs> <laughs> There's Marcus was, or Matt. It was Matt. It was Matt, yes. Yeah. It's still one out of five, isn't it? <laughs> That's one out of five. <laughs> so what do you got, Dan? What do you got behind right, well that? Got, let, me, let me check. I haven't gone for some shit prizes lately, so I'll go. I'll oh, check. yes. <laughs> I'm like, what have we got left this down shit there? Shit prize is always better. Uh, is it this cushion, the bears? Oh. Yeah. 
<laughs> I think it's going to be. Are you playing out my old, my, my old footy team? <laughs> yeah, I am. They don't exist. <laughs> he's trying exist. to distract me, bro. He's trying to distract me while I get a shit. <laughs> he's always like, but they're my team. <laughs> you said you got a pool, don't you? Yeah. All right, hang on. Oh, I know what you're going to get now. I was like, hang on, what are you getting? Yeah. Actually, your wife will like this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, no, the kids will love that. Oh, there there you go. Go. That is not kitty a shit float. prize. The, it is a is. unicorn kitty float, everyone. Oh. Listen. <laughs> Wait until they get into that. There you Up go. to 30 kilos. That's perfect. I might even get in it. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, well, cheers, Tommy. I really Thanks enjoyed the me. chat. No, cheers, it was man. awesome. Thank you. Thank for you. On. Thank you.